Hey, everybody. Happy Tuesday? Oh, Just yeah. a rando Tuesday, man. It's Tuesday. Nothing we're special eating. about it. We had to clear out a 2018. We were uh, fresh out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we had to delay the podcast one day. So we were back in. It's a, it's a ta- I mean, we, we can't legally call it a tax dodge, but but let's just say that, that, that incentives were aligned where it made more sense for this to be the first episode. We're leaving yeah. 2018 in 2018, fellas. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not here to talk about the past. Also, uh, as you know, you cannot be con- uh, convicted of a crime that took place in a previous year. So that, that is right. Dodge that bullet. Well done. Well, there is a government shutdown, and so I, I think that is purged, <laughs> too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All, cri- all crime is legal. <laughs> <laughs> it's purge year, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. Well, until, cow- until they get all those gov- you know, the, the government people back, right? Because otherwise it's just... You know, a bunch of paper stacking up on a desk that no one's at. So, so now. But who the time. put the paper there? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the eagle's beak of democracy. I'd like to do a version of the purge, where like you know, police are watching all this mayhem on cameras and stuff, and letting it happen, and then, you know, they see some guy after bludgeoning somebody reach into his pocket, pop a cap off of a bottle of coke and pull out a plastic straw They're like oh no <laughs> this we gotta stop <laughs> yeah <laughs> police uh, uh, uh enough, only enforce the file purge night yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness well welcome everybody welcome to a new year uh new year new me uh all sorts of all the sayings do you uh do you scrub off your uh your, your painted toenails justin I have not. No. Yeah. No. I. I. I uh, man, the delight on all three of my kids' face when I when I pulled off my my socks, they were digging it. Uh, uh, our wives uh, uh, treat, treated us to pedicures yesterday. Oh, that's nice. And so uh, there came this crucial moment so, in which, <laughs> so New Year's he, Eve, we show up essentially in pajamas with Miller lights in hand, <laughs> getting a pedicure by the ladies. And uh, and and got to painted toes the whole nine yards. Wow! So, here's the problem, gentlemen. Uh, you might uh, here to to question your choices. Yeah, Brian, your your children were delighted when they saw the toenails. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What are you gonna do next year? <clears throat> uh, uh, nothing. <clears throat> I've already done it. Fingernails. <clears throat> year after oh, mascara. Goodness. You know, you may find yourself backed into. You know, I mean, I'm not starting full, an arms full, race if that's what you're worried about. It's a foot race. Look, so. this this all, this all leads up to Brian's full drag review at the uh, at the eclipse party uh, in five years. <laughs> uh, Brian, your toe looks like the time that uh, I dropped a crate on my toes. It ran to Barry's warehouse. <laughs> was the ever ever seen a toenail come off? Yeah. Oh jeez. Oh, yeah. Been there. Yeah. You looked underneath there, and you're like, oh my god, I was not meant to see this. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. Hey, yeah. Hey, I, Evolution has carefully guarded us from ever seeing what you have just seen. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right, I think I, I'm thinking. Oh, sorry, you were up, Brian? I was gonna say like uh, I got I got, I got some 2019 uh, a little tidbit factoid to get us started when we when we launch. Okay, sweet. Well, oh, Justin just left the show. Well, so Justin just fine. left, so that's good right. Work, everybody. We will see. You Breaking next news. Week. Also, by the way, uh, uh, Night Attack will be uh, uh, on at about its normal time tonight. Uh, it's pre-recorded, but it will be debuting on the stream. And then I know Je- I know Cheeto has it. I don't know exactly when it'll go out, but it's out there. So that's uh, something to look forward to later tonight. Yeah, great, very very funny episode with with Ice Cream Social uh, and uh, live episodes resume next week. That's right. All right, you guys get to do weird things. We're the best. Yep. Yeah. All right, then take it away in three, <clears throat> two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. 2019! Justin Robert Young. Yeah, this is the New Year's Day. We're, we're, we're turning over a new leaf. We're totally different people than we were last night. Yeah, 100%. Uh, uh, and, and our super producer, Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi. Yeah, I got good news, gentlemen. Exciting news. 2019, the future is now. What future, you ask? I don't know, three awesome realities, all of which everybody's thrilled with. 2019, that's when Akira took place. 2019, Mm. that's when Blade Runner took place. 2019, that's when The Running Man took place. Of those three, (laughs) 
<laughs> Which one are we closest to right now? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to live off world on a colony. <laughs> Uh, I mean, of the three, almost certainly the Running Man. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Uh, like we are, we are one, we are one bold new uh, uh, television initiative away from 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 the Running Man. Uh, yeah, I, uh, Running Man is is the one we're shockingly uh, shockingly close to. The new I, Running you know, Man challenge, same as the old. I get into that. Challenge. I want to. I know I did that intro, and something didn't sound right. Uh oh. What was that? Andrew? It's bothered me for a while. It's uh -oh. bothered me for a while. I think we need to add a host to the show. Hey, we're full up. We're full up. There's three of us. Everybody knows no, weird things is three hosts. we're going to add a host to the show. No, there's three hosts and a super producer extraordinaire, Bryce Castillo. Yeah, I think there's we're no going to add we, a we, full we can't have equal a fifth, host. We can't have a fifth member a fifth, of this yeah, cast. That'd, that'd be a lot of people. Yeah, that'd be weird. Right. Yeah. It won't be a fifth member. We're going to get rid of one position and add one. Wait, are you firing me? They'll still have the same Wait duties. But Andrew, we're going to change the friends, title. We, we've been friends since I was 16. This okay. is a betrayal. Yeah, all right, look, fine. Doing to me on 2019? Justin what and I will... horrifying omen. Justin and I will fight each other to the death in order to save our one position on the show. <laughs> I'll kill him. I like this <laughs> better than my idea. <laughs> we're back to Journey Quest, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it uh, seems to me like uh, the only way to get a fourth full member would be to fire Bryce, and that just doesn't seem yeah. fair to Bryce. All right, bye, everybody. Oh. But wait, <laughs> hold on. What if we fired Bryce as super producer extraordinaire okay. uh -huh. and hired uh, – hold on. Let me have some negotiations. Hey, Bryce, listen. Hi. I have a business opportunity. You ever consider being a co-host on a podcast, like uh, a full member of, 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 a, of a crew? I, I feel like I, I'm – okay. I mean – Okay, listen. You'd still have to produce, but what if you were the fourth <laughs> full member – Full co-host of the Weird Things podcast. Oh, okay. And from now on, everyone who went to patreon.com slash weird things would know mm. that all that money, money is being divvied up exactly four ways, uh, and you would be ma making much more than a nickel <laughs> per episode. Well, I don't even think the nickel was quite on this one. But okay. I, I, okay, you weren't even getting a nickel. I wasn't that's, <laughs> that's the real betrayal of all this. Right. But, uh, <clears throat> but, but, but if I could pull this off, would you be into it? Sure. All right. Hey, guy. Okay. Hey, all, right, all right. Look. Hey, I got a fourth. I got a fourth co-host here. A fourth, there was fourth. A, some hesitation there. Do you have other offers? <laughs> no. It's just. This is a weird way to propose all of this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bryce. Bryce. Uh, uh, gentlemen, totally let's all get down on one knee. Wait, 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 Bryce. 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 What kind of way was this to it's... propose? Uh, uh... A weird way. <laughs> <laughs> Already on brand, co-host. Good job. Well, uh, thanks for having me, Hi. Uh, Bryce. We would like we would like to upgrade you to full full member of the Avengers oh, and the you. Justice League oh. and uh, 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 the American Society for the Prevention of for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. The ASPCA. Yes, <laughs> well, all of those full members. <laughs> okay. Th well, thank you. Also, that you're chairman of the board. Oh, and now I'm. The, oh, that's a. Big... And you're in the Rat Pack. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. And uh, uh, your 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 new name is Bryce Co-host Castillo. <laughs> well, Bryce is already my middle name, so this is going to be a couple of forms. Yeah, have to fill we're out. just getting rid of Anthony. Anthony's right out. Anthony's Sorry. Gone. <laughs> well, I'm happy to be uh, uh, here. I'm I'm assuming my membership ring, my decoder ring, is in the mail. You uh, have to ship it to yourself. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. I'll just go to the uh, warehouse. By the way, <laughs> also uh, we're going to need new cover art. Uh, so if you can just go ahead and get on that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I think I made some at some point. I think at one point I wanted to redesign all that stuff anyway. <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad to be here. Uh, congratulations. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, so anyhow, yeah, basically, uh, Bryce, yeah, it's the same amount of work and it's a title change. So. <laughs> but also, but also like, like in all seriousness, quick plug for the Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash weird things. Uh, that money goes uh, to, to one bucket. Get divvies, get give it divvied up exactly four ways. So if you have appreciated Bryce's work or uh, 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 the fact that uh, the rest of us keep showing up, then uh, uh, please be a contributor over at patreoncom slash weird things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, um, I'm gonna do this is like legit. I'm gonna do a PSA kind of moment here. Okay. Have you looked at the statistics on pedestrian deaths in the U.S.? Not recently. Well, I mean, look, I, I think we all we all had a wild New Year's Eve, uh, uh, but but not everybody spent it uh, in that kind of scintillating fashion. Uh, no, I'm I'm not mm. familiar with uh, these statistics on pedestrian deaths in the United States. Are they? I mean, 
long story short, are they good? Although I, 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 I will say it is low key a hell of a read every uh, census to look at, or, or I, don't, I don't even think it's it's census. Uh, it's the yearly stats on how Americans have died, uh, because man, I'm just gonna let you know, grain threshers, the real menace in America. <laughs> Whoa. No, Silo no, fires. No time. It is like higher than a lot of things that we like make laws to stop. Well, we've had overall like traffic and car fatal car fatalities have actually been declining. Cars have become much safer, uh, built to handle impacts better, whatever. And so, car fatalities have been overall been dropping. The biggest trend upwards has been in pedestrian deaths, which have actually, if you go look at let's say 2008, 2007, 2008, uh, there was about like you know between like you know 4,000, like 2000. Nine, there were 4,000 deaths from, you know, people, pedestrians getting hit. 2017 went up to 6,000. Now, is that just because we're walking more or uh, like, is that an indicator that we're being healthier? There are several causes that are put into there. But if you look at the graph, walking, people tend to be walking more and that is a contributing factor. Um, there's another factor, though. If you look at when the trend line goes up, and let me send this to you all. Um, sure. Let me remember how to send a thing. And I, if you take I'm a look afraid, at when I'm, that is, I'm, and you, you try to figure out, you know, you know, you know, causality and causation. As we all know, there's there are places to start. Often people go like, they're not, you know, it's not the same. I'm like, no, but it's a place to start investigating. You know, yeah, uh, it's not an excuse to ignore it and say things just happened. You say, oh, these two things may be correlated. How do we test for this? So we do, we have, I have a graph here, this may not be what you're sending, but this is from the NHTSA, uh, uh, showing that fatalities, we're, we're pretty plateaued between 2009 and, and 2014, and then 2015 and 2016, they've gone up significantly. Well, look at the, go to the pedestrian category. Well, and, and pedestrian ca is also significantly up over the past, I mean, between 2012 and 2016. Mm -hmm. Um and and the percentage also has has steadily increased here. So what a what what is this saying? Uh, look at the other graph I sent you, and um, <clears throat> the problem is that often we don't have enough data. We don't have, and that's one of the problems we have to deal with. We don't have a lot of data, and it's about deaths, why people died, or other circumstances around it. As far as aggregating this data together, and it's one of the big problems in data sciences and everything else is that. You have to like gun deaths. Like I shared a thing with Justin about worldwide. You know, people say, "Oh, you know, United States, the leader of gun deaths." Well, they only did a search on English-speaking countries, and when you expand that, you find out like, man, way too many people are dying from guns. You know, and you realize it's it's a much it's a global problem, but the data was biased. You know, from some research we heard because they only did searches for English language newspapers, and that's other things different municipalities record their data differently but if you show that show that graph of pedestrian deaths in the united states go to the right side um can you think about something some big thing that happened around 2008 2009 and then gradually got bigger and bigger and bigger uh, uh that I mean, be uh, uh, mobile uh smartphone usage. yeah iphones mm, right yeah. uh, listening mm -hmm. to your music while you're bebopping around listening to your audiobooks gps texting distracted Both driving people driving and people walking yeah yeah oh sure distracted walking yeah so yeah and 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 it's and problem is sometimes you'll hear that people blame it more distracted walking because oh it's pedestrian deaths oh it's and you hear people like oh people cross the streets on their phones like which is a bad idea but the drivers i got rear-ended and it's not because i got rear-ended two months ago by a guy who was guess what on his, on his phone um and it was minor not, not a big deal but this is just a caution to everybody. If you're in a large vehicle, don't pull your effing phone out. Keep it in your pocket. Don't use, don't, don't, don't. It, there's, there's the, the, what's the phenomenon where you think you're really good at something, but you're not? The, the, um, the Dunning-Kruger effect? Where exactly. it's like you don't even know that you don't know. I've been with friends who pull out their phones and handle it while they drive. And I'm like, don't do it. Like, no, no. I'm like, you understand, you don't know that you're bad at it until you get into an accident or you hurt somebody, but then you will attribute it to something else. Yeah. 2,000 more people die a year now because of this, you know, and that's not counting all the, 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 you know, all the people running into, you know, the smaller accidents. That's just total number of deaths is this. So just, just learn how to use voice control. Don't, don't pull the phone out. 
I mean, look, uh, I, I I made the call. It was my phone or a car, and and I picked my phone. So like, uh, uh, it is easier than ever in certain markets. So uh, just say, uh, look, I I've, I've made my choice in life. I, I yeah. will not be distracted driving because I will distract live. Well, and there there are like I know on on iOS there's a feature um, do not disturb while driving because it can tell mm -hmm. when you're in a car when you're driving, especially if you're using any sort of navigation data, um, and it'll make it so that your phone doesn't even give you notifications as it's as it tells that you're driving uh, I, you know my thing on that price is that i think if you're responsible enough to turn that off you're probably responsible to keep your phone in your pocket but, when but, you but drive. This, this could be one of those things where uh it's a nudge moment where they yeah. make it on by right. default like you, you can opt out of it but but just mm -hmm. by default it, it comes enabled yeah. that's a great yeah, point because yeah, it, it, yeah. it, it, it it's just you make a decision once Right. Like, like you like you say, OK, new year, new me. I'm going to take out my phone. In fact, I will encourage anybody who is listening to us right now on an iPhone. Go to your settings. It's in settings. You can uh, uh, have like distracted draw or like uh, do not disturb when driving. driving yeah. It's an automatic thing that just pops up. So basically what you are guarding against in this one moment of clarity is the alert that pops up while you're driving that you look down on and you miss the 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 thing in front of you that causes mm -hmm. pain and suffering financially and emotionally for for you and those around you. You know, we we had a major setback with with self driving because of one of the car experiments, self driving car experiments, where they're trying to test these things out there and trying to make sure these things work. And the way they do it is they have the robot drive, and they say, well, just to be sure, we're going to have a human supervising. We're going to have a human supervising. Mm -hmm. And what happened was you had a human who was so used to it being routine and everything working that they realized that, hey, I'm just going to watch movies on my phone while it's driving. And a pedestrian got killed. And the self-driving industry took a big hit from that, like, ah, oh, self-driving car hits person. Like, that wasn't the plan. The plan was this human would be intervening and watching the road and say, nope, there's a person. Now we know we need to account for this. Yeah. But that's not what happened. you know. And, and it's frustrating because people – blame and and i think they should have been policing the people in the cars they should have been watching them more to make sure they weren't becoming distracted but you know because of that accident and somebody being distracted while testing this thing we may have more lives lost because of the delay in self-driving and implementing these features and and even there was there was a video earlier this year or i guess in 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 2018 of of a man and i don't know if he was using the tesla autopilot or uh, whether it was another one of these experimental, mm -hmm. like in Uber or Google's full self-driving stuff, and he was like asleep at the wheel on, yeah. a, like literally asleep, like Tesla. It, yeah, uh, you know that stuff is that's just a bad look for everything, you know. Yeah, and I I use that I use that autopilot mode all the time, and I love it. I use it while I drive and pay attention because it's an extra layer of if some car comes at me and I don't see it. And when you when I see people try to use it like that, like it's clearly not what it's meant for. It's like you know putting a car in cruise control and taking a nap, you know, on a straight highway. It's horrible. And you know, and and you know, there's people who say that you know Tesla should do more to signal people about how you're supposed to use this or not. Maybe the case, but it's an example of an amazing feature when you use it right. When you drive, you see a lot of videos of people who are driving, and all of a sudden out of nowhere, some car comes at them, and the Tesla swerves and avoids it. It saved, as far as we know, you know, a lot more lives, but that potential for abuse is frustrating. And in that case, the guy had jerry-rigged the steering wheel because yeah. you have to have your hands on the wheel for autopilot to, to function. And he had yep. jerry-rigged it so that it just had the connectors there and it made it seem like his hands were there. There was a company selling a fake hand to clamp oh on. Oh, my your God. That's they got a one star. One star, good sir, on Amazon. <laughs> you are a merchant of death. Now, they got, like, the National Highway Transportation Board, whatever, they got shut down by that. And then they came back and rebranded it as a beverage holder. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Oh, so, so this is that we, we are now looking at videos on how you can hack it, uh, uh, you know, basically to, to do the thing that makes it makes the Tesla believe that your hands are on the wheel. I, 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 can, I can certainly understand... Uh, 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 you know, look, getting that technology, um, you know, understanding where it is uh, uh, and making it better. But, man, is that stupid. Yeah, well, that's like, manslaughter at that point. You know, if you if you do that, you get in that. That's manslaughter. You know, you're, you're actively disengaging a safety device. 
you know, and if you kill somebody else, to me, that's manslaughter. Yeah. No. Um, anyhow. Happy New Year! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, pedestrian deaths. Uh, uh, they're, they're, on, they're on the rise. But hopefully, you want to know 2019... Uh, 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 new year, new country. Uh, uh, let's let's uh, let, let's take that number down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, let's let's uh, let's. If you're in a car, with somebody and they pull it out, pull the phone out, and they're talking on it, or texting or whatever, just like a hey, party foul, dude. Let's let's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Let's be a little safer. Uh All right. So Brian brought up a great point. Uh, all these movies that were set in 2019 as being part of the future, all these, you know, content. Um, and 2019 certainly turned out, or as we first day of 2019, probably different than what we expected as children or uh, unborn, Bryce. Um, what... What are your What are your thoughts? How did we How did How did 2019 happen? How does it compare to where I you mean, thought we'd be? Look, uh, I think by comparing it to those, uh, at least uh, Akira and Blade Runner, uh, we are dumber but cleaner than we <laughs> thought we would be by 2019. We have a few less crazy gadgets. We have plenty of good gadgets, right? We we have a few less of the the big, you know, the flying cars uh, of it all and the replicants. Uh, but we're we're making our way. Uh, but in general, I feel like we kept things a lot cleaner than we thought we were going to by then, because most of uh, all those stories are all dystopic, uh, uh, you know, totally uh, ink black skies because we've destroyed the environment, trash going all over the place. They certainly uh, all of those are parables about how we have lost our moral compass to technology. And while certainly we, we can have a, a, a good discussion, as we often do on this show, about where we are with that, I think in general... It looks like a lot of the things that those stories were illustrating that we lost, we still have, which is good mm-hmm. news. Uh, not only that from a environmental standpoint, but uh, I believe there are fewer deaths than uh, anyone would expect in any of those dystopian futures. Uh, a lot of those stories were written at a time from, you know, 19... 19- uh, 1960s to the 1990s, we saw a, 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 a horrific uptick in the number of uh, human murders, and uh, and that that has alleviated itself. I believe we're back down to uh, 1960s and before levels of violence in America. Uh, our taste for the graphic depiction of violence is much much lower now than it was just 20 years ago, certainly 40 years ago, uh, and uh, the kids are having lowest, uh, un, uh, much lower unplanned pregnancies and uh, uh, in general are, are getting uh, becoming sexually active later than ever uh, uh, before. And uh, uh, respect for uh, many different walks of life are at unprecedented levels that were completely uh, unimaginable just uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. Our air in like the United States, air quality is substantially better. Uh, overall, waterway qualities. There's areas for large areas of improvement, but there's more attention to that. But like yeah, air quality has dramatically gotten better. Uh, forestry. Uh, actually, we have you know greater number of trees than we did 30 years ago, 40 years ago when those were first. You know those stories By were put together. A huge amount. I believe we have the yeah. most trees since the mid 1800s. Uh, like 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 uh, in nearly nearly in 200 years, we got a record for a number of trees. Hmm. Yeah. Although I don't know, out here in California, they're starting to act up. I, I think maybe yeah. we should have uh, followed through on just cutting them all down. <laughs> oh, what with the burning stuff down? The they're yeah. just tinder you know, boxes. I, I'm not. I'm not in so much of a. Fa- maybe we had it going uh, before. Yeah, and there's, you know. A lot of problematic areas, you know, the developing world, of course, is you try to build your economy as fast as you can, spending money on things like pollution control or things like that you don't do. You know, the the, the plastic waste in the ocean is a problem. It's more has to do with not the consumption of plastics in, you know, the, the, the developed world, which is just ridiculous to me that we, you know, ban things like plastic straws when the real problem is recycling systems and places like that that end up dumping waste it's like 90 percent of the plastic in the ocean patch the you know great great you know patch you know comes from asia and africa because of they're not where we are as far as management of these systems and waste management etc um and i think that my frustration is we we pay attention to the wrong thing you know we we we, we go yay we banned this thing which does 
effectively nothing, and the attention we put there could have put more effectively on trying to manage those problems. So, so you're um, saying that that banning plastic straws is uh, effectively like America doing a juice cleanse. Like we are definitely feeling some pain, but ultimately it may not exactly have the results that you would have. Uh, hoped. Well, uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a. It, I I think trying to. I've been out in the middle of the Pacific, like way out in the middle of the Pacific, uh, on the bottom of the ocean, if you will, too, and yeah. seeing plastic, seeing garbage. That you're like, I'm a hundred miles away from anything anywhere, and there is a plastic can or bottle, or whatever, and maybe it came from a boat. I actually actually reached my hand out of a submersible cage in the middle of shark infested waters to pull plastic from the bottom of the ocean because it's like you just don't want that there. Um, and these things can be problematic, but you have to address like the real cause and the real source of these things, not the imaginary ones. You know, and we've talked about this before. You know, you can we can say, oh, we'll ban plastic bags when you're in a place like California with lower wa amounts of water than where those are produced, it's actually probably worse for the environment because if you're using reusables, you got to use detergents and water and stuff to clean it, which takes more water, which then is an impact on the system, et cetera. You know, anyway, I don't want to get into, we don't need to get into that. But the point is, is that like, there are a lot of things we can do. And I think we need to be smarter in asking like, is this really going to help or just make us feel like we're helping, but it's kind of BS. How, how much of like, Pollution and and I'm asking because I I don't know but like um and and I guess it's it's not just pollution but uh, or I don't know like how 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 much can any individual person bear the weight of environmental disaster versus uh, the in the you know uh, international um, companies you know creating pollution at you know, a global scale. Like, well, eat, if you if you eat less meat, if everybody ate less meat, is that going to offset, you know, fossil fuel generation or industrialized pollution? You know, and that that's a great question because there are some that argue that it helps. There are other people that argue that when you actually look at land use and how it is versus grazing and protein, it's questionable. I would say one of the things that we could look to is. We have a lot of environmental problems because we have we have pretty good laws in place, but we don't put them into effect. You know, Florida, we have a problem because you have the you know the the sugar cane industry uses lots of fertilizers and stuff that then gets flushed out through the canals out into the oceans, where it then strips away all the algae, which kills off the fish, and then you get dolphins that eat those fish, but they can't go south because a different dolphin tribe won't let them pass. And you, you get this big, long chain cause and effect because you have a party that is because the state has given them permission to pollute. Um, and it's not a market driven thing. It's po it's politics that you you have a lot of these things. And yeah. I paying attention it's, to it's that. Guess, guess, by the way, guess who spends ungodly amounts of money uh, subsidizing uh, the careers of politicians in Tallahassee, the yeah. sugarcane lobby. And, and that's you know, that's an issue where it's like. We've known the issue, and, and when we say, hey, you know, government's the answer to solve it, it hasn't been for years there because you there's – I don't I, – yeah, and I don't – and I'd say that, like, it's insolvable, but I, I think asking questions – I mean, asking questions, attention to these things, like, you know, a lot of these problems – we like the knee-jerk ones that make the great headlines, you know, but sometimes these things are more complex, and I think embrace the complexity. Mm-hmm. At least we will on this show. Yeah. yeah. 2019, we're all about the complex. We're very complex. Mm -hmm. I mean, hell, we started this show with three hosts. Now we got four. Did you see that coming? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we, we would say that overall, cleaner than we expected, not mm -hmm. without a lot of problems, things we need to address, and and things like our ability to affect our climate, our environment on a, on a large scale mm -hmm. are real. You know, the, 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 the degree to which that can be affected is not something that you know uh we we have with certainty but it is a thing that we need to know like oh uh, yeah maybe there's a direction we should be going towards which is putting less things into the atmosphere than we need to and doing this how we do it the way we do it i think is a matter for debate but uh other than that <laughs> i mean from a tech side else? you know there from a tech side there have been advances in in robotics, uh, uh, robotic forms, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, where like we don't have replicants today, but we have a lot of the pieces that if, you know, uh, 
a few different projects coalesced into one thing could look very similar to the idea of a mm -hmm. replicant. I, I think from the running man perspective, we could definitely produce a competition to the death better than they did in the running man. Right. <laughs> like there's no, like, like if you were to do the running man now on YouTube, like it would probably, it would look a lot better than, than the running man uh, version that aired in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that, that was a fun movie. Uh, remember who directed it? Who did direct it? Mm -mm. Oh, I know this too because I did. I I, I did talk, talk about this movie for like an hour with Cargill on the junk food cinema uh, <laughs> uh, show, but I, I forget. Starsky. Oh Paul wow! Paul Michael Glaser. Michael Glaser. Wow. Oh. Very cool. Uh, man, just yeah. such. Go go watch go watch the run the running yeah. man the running Fun movie. Man. Richard Johnson. Legend. Okay, so we we've, we've the flying car. We'll say is kind of sort of a reality, not in wide use, but we oh. have. Oh my God! Wait, I, I, uh, 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 I don't know if this is a good thing to to side jack or if we want to uh, circle uh, back to this, but I feel like we need to discuss. Speaking of flying objects, uh, the the Gatwick Airport. Situation. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I actually don't know anything don't... about this. Yeah, leave oh, me in. Okay. I... Brian, you're, you're the same as everybody else, actually. <laughs> but, uh, but Justin, recap. All right. So I believe it was two days before Christmas. There are two major airports that go in and out of London. Heathrow and Gatwick. It was two days before Christmas and all through UK. <laughs> everybody so was tidied this. up, imagine. jolly and gay, waiting for St. Nick and presents that come. When all of a sudden, a trouble. Uh, what a bummer. Yeah, almost. Almost <laughs> close, landed it. Almost. almost. Very close. <laughs> uh, this, is, this, is, this is great. Just, Justin, this was on my notes for last because it is such a great... It is a great where you're like, hey, I guess this is a story because people know what's going on, and and I'm too, I'm for me to question this. Yeah, there's a lot of questions that I have a, a week afterward, and nobody seems to have any answers. Well, uh, no, have you heard the late? I'll tell you the latest. Okay, 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 no, 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 I have not heard the latest. So just to set it up, two major airports that go in and out of London: Gatwick and Heathrow. Heathrow is the more expensive. Gatwick's a little bit further out, but you can get a cheaper flight. So it is very, very, very busy uh, during the the holiday season right everybody coming in and coming out all of a sudden a drone starts flying in the pathway of where the airplanes land and take off and so they shut down the airport for a day in fact it wound up being i think a day and a half or two and a half days that this uh drone kept showing up uh they didn't know uh they didn't want to shoot it down because uh it might uh, the bullet might land in somebody else's, you know, yard or hit somebody as it came down. But they were effectively crippled by a drone for uh, and, and maybe we'll, we'll see how many. Well, here we go. 760 flights uh, were going to arrive. Uh, 110,000 passengers. This was a global snarl because of uh, how busy Gatwick is as an international destination. But it just totally screwed up air travel around the globe. Because somebody had a drone, and by the way, like, we still don't know, at least unless there's an update here that Andrew has for me. Nobody was able to find the people when it was uh, when it was up there. Uh, uh, we don't know exactly what kind of drone. We don't know if they were multiple uh, 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 drones that they were going in and out. We don't know why they wanted to do it. But it was all it took was, at, at the very least, that people can prove one drone that snarled international travel for multiple days. Now, uh, but, but uh, before oh, we oh, find oh. out the extra intel that, that Andrew has, I could see a sideways version of this where it's one uh, person with a laser pointer doing the exact same thing. If somebody's hiding in the bushes and just keep shining a light on every inbound flight, mm -hmm. I could see the exact same thing happening. And then, you know, after a day of harassment, they, they don't find him, And finally he's stopped and, and that stuff lands. So it's like, I don't, I don't want to demonize drones specifically because what, what the real victim, the real cause is just one person who, who, is it wants to be an asshat and ruin it for well, everybody Tommy, else? Look, I don't think anybody on this show is is is, is putting the blame on the on 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 the technology. Right. Uh, I think that it it does prove 
hey, you should probably have a plan. In the same way that you should probably have the plan for laser pointer guy, <laughs> there should be a protocol in place to try to figure out, okay, who are who's doing this? How do we stop it? You know, how do we uh, safeguard all these flights coming in and out? Uh, 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 and that's eventually what happened. Eventually, this got turned over to uh, the British military, and they employed a Israeli technology to uh, uh, create. They called it like a do uh, iron dome or something like that. That basically prevented jammed signals, so that the drone that they felt confident that the drone couldn't fly within the the certain uh, uh, pathway of the of the of the airplane. But not anymore. like not like the actual Iron Dome, not like the, the one. Oh wait! Oh no 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 no! no <laughs> not the was, anti air no, no, missile no, no, defense. No, you're right. You're system. right. Iron Dome is the missile tech. Uh, <laughs> this was something dome. Something. Okay. So, I don't know. You can probably Google it, but yeah. uh, it, it was yeah, it was Israeli tech that eventually got the planes moving again and i think that's uh uh that's that's just going to be a thing that will be more of an issue the more that there are are people that want to do it uh then we will figure it out but but the fact that we still don't know is that's the craziest to me that's the more generating of like okay well there, there's got to be copycats because somebody just proved how to get away with it mm. well <clears throat> so this is what when it first happened, uh, we didn't have any photos of the drone. We had, we had yeah. sightings. We don't, there were no photos of the drone. And some newspapers ran photos that were just stock photos of a drone. And so you could be led to believe this is a photo of the drone. Was not. It was just a photo of a random drone. Now, apparently there was a sighting. Somebody said, I think I saw a drone. I saw something like this, which then, you know, there, we just had a few like a week earlier. We there was an airplane landed. They you saw the nose cone have been crushed by a drone, and so there was awareness yeah. of like, yeah, you know, I forget where that happened, but there was like, yeah, this could be very very problematic. So they did like a perimeter search, and they think they found like part of like a broken drone or something on the runway. Okay, that was part of. It. They say we think we found part of a broken drone on the runway. Not sure when or where what the story was on that. News goes out, drone sighted around Gatwick. Shut down the whole airplane. Shut, shut down the airports, Heathrow and Gatwick. They shut this thing down to prevent this. So it shut down Gatwick, right? Big news everywhere, okay? Now they're, like, trying to find out, like, what's going on? Is it terrorists or whatever? Into actual terrorist groups and people like this were, like, you know, saying, like, nope, not us, not us. <laughs> and story builds and builds, and then they get more sightings. They're about ready to start things up again, and they shut it down because they're like, we just spotted, we spotted drones. More people reporting we spotted drones, Right. And then they shut it all down again, and then they wait, and they bring in the tech and all this, and eventually things get going. We don't know what caused the first wave. Second wave. Can I guess? Go for it. Enthusiasts who want to help. Uh, the, the, these are the equivalents of uh, the folks running out with their deer hunt rifles mm. during the Charles Whitman shooting. Like, uh, I got a drone. I'm going to spot their drone and knock it down. Uh no, I don't think anybody, any any private citizen would have dared doing that at that point. Okay, all right. I I think I saw a headline that yeah. might. I think I see what you're what you're going at here. Go uh, for it. Uh, is is this possibly all a a a, a real estate play? To oh, I don't know about that. Uh, um, apparently, well, uh, five days ago, Gatwick Airport was sold. After... Yeah, that was long. That was in the works way before. Okay, okay, okay. Because um, in, in my head, it's um, like, oh, this air. We're we're making this airport look pretty crappy if we. So, well, what happened is once they're looking, but once this up, the police sent up their drones. Oh. And so you had people who were probably spotting police drones and reporting them, and maybe not reporting in the right location or reporting them there. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell distance on these things, and they might be like, no, ours is over here, not over there. So now you have this second wave. And, and to your point, Brian, like, yeah, other drones. But in this case, it may have been police drones that kept the thing going. And there may have been. Some group or some individual may have started this thing, but then the information chaos – after the fact. Wow. So I didn't uh, uh, in in my when I was uh, 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 just looking, I was just Googling Gatwick every six hours uh, uh, as this was happening. The vast majority of the coverage was about everybody, how far this snarl had had gone right to every mm -hmm. far flung corner of the earth. Somebody was sitting at a hotel or at, a, at an airport bar, not knowing when they were going to get home for Christmas. Uh, what's fascinating is that idea that even as it was breaking, uh, 
I was like, yeah, you know, there's some people seem to have like very far away, almost like UFO sighting uh, uh, level photographs of this thing that there's like a, a red circle over some dot that could be God knows what. Right. But nobody had a shot of the drone. Nobody even knew what kind of drone it could be. Uh, and and I just assumed in my head that this was being caused by multiple sightings, that there was a point in which it was it was uh, clear to the naked eye what was happening. I hadn't even processed the idea that, yeah, somebody might have seen a thing once and then hysteria breaks out. And next thing you know, everybody's got a drone. Oh, the drone passed over my house. I had to call. So it's. Who knows? It's Pokemon. It's goblins. It's this. But I, I think uh, <laughs> we're going to see more of this. Wow. Wow. Dude, this is that's wild because that thing was that was that was a huge, 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 huge story. So maybe it wasn't drones. It was literally just uh, <laughs> it was literally just this people, uh, you know, uh, uh, trying to do their due diligence. And next thing you know, all the all the information just can't be called correctly. Yeah, yeah, I, and it could be one started it, you know, and then, you know, that. And then, you know, we had back in August uh, in Venezuela, Maduro, who was uh, apparently attacked by a drone. You know, I mean, it's hard to know anything that comes out of that media there, what the likelihood of it was. But I wouldn't put it past somebody deciding they were going to try to take out the president with a drone. Well, and, and th th think about uh, how relatively affordable uh it would be to get a cluster of of let's say 20 drones at around 500 dollars each so now you're 10 grand into it you spend 10 grand on software and uh you're able to do essentially a uh <clears throat> a geese strike uh uh to to just send a, a a cloud of them into the engines of a of a plane about to land i mean that's 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 horrific to think of how simple that would be yeah, there was uh, back in August too in Syria, the Russian air base was attacked by a bunch of drones. These were uh, they look like you know the, the the these are the winged ones, fixed winged ones. But you know, apparently a bunch of explosives put on these things and they were launched towards an air base. And you know, it's it's there's you know you you get the you know the, the the fear factor comes in because it's like well you know somebody did a demo of like i put i you know they put facial recognition on a drone and gave it like you know fake gun or whatever and it's like oh this could track you down and do this it's like listen we've had bombs forever and that allows you a tremendous amount of anonymity and that's a problem that you know not a solved problem but a problem we deal with but it's not a new problem of you could remotely kill somebody not even being there like yes we could do this before, you know, so uh, do, you, do, you, do you think that this eventually leads to, you know, the the, the proliferation of like like the, the 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 jamming tech that apparently the, the military felt comfortable operating uh, uh, that maybe it, it's more it's not whether or not drones will always be dangerous. It'll be whether or not that technology gets cheap enough to where the only place that you're really allowed to fly certain drones are where businesses or the government says you're allowed i uh, yeah i think i think that what i'm hoping for is that while we have the scary arms race of this stuff and part of the problem has been a lot of that tech is like oh the military has this tech if you look at the development problem the, the military is often there used to be like a 10-year advantage on military over civilian tech and it was because of the amount of money they could spend and do this. They could do custom chips, custom image sensors, things like this, and pay way more because they didn't ever had to go to market. Now that gap is much smaller. I'm hoping that you know companies like Apple, you know, and Facebook to defend their campuses and protect them from harassment are going to start pouring tons of money into commercial technologies that become available for everybody else, and that'll lead a new race of defensive technologies. Because I guess really that future would be inevitable unless it's illegal to jam a drone, right? Unless we are like standing up for drone operators' rights and say that you as a private citizen, like Brian, you let, let's say yeah, at, at the Seven Acre Schwood, tired of these people with their Peep and Tom drones watching uh, shooting episodes of The Modern Rogue, uh, I'm going to ban, I'm going to uh, make my property and, and let's even extend it a little further 
uh, uh, impervious to drone, like it'll it'll jam a, a drone signal. Like now, does that? What what are the legal questions there? Do you have to keep it to your border? Can you infringe on your neighbor's drone flying abilities? Because uh, right now you can't shoot down a drone. Uh, correct. That's um, a federal offense. Well, it, uh, uh, correct. Uh, although there was um, somebody. There was that one case in Texas where somebody had like 40 acres and somebody was sending a drone with the intention of harassing the person and the person shot it down and the court ruled in their favor. Mm. Uh, so 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 I don't want to say universally, but in general, yes, you're not allowed to shoot things out of the sky, right. uh, although it does change things ever so slightly when it comes to like a microwave jamming gun that you just aim and it, and it just, you know, fritzes there, whatever, and forces the thing to land, um, you know. Uh, then at that point you have a claim. It's like, hey, I'm trying to fly this on my property. It just happens to be at a height that allows me to peek way over your fence line. Uh, you know, do you get to to stop them or 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 whatever? Yeah, there's. I I think we're gonna see you know a lot of that becoming discussed because you know, airport. I think airports are gonna start wanting to put in systems to defend themselves. And you know, you could do. Remember, remember the 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 project where they showed the thing that could zap um, mosquitoes, female mosquitoes out of the air using a laser. Oh, I don't. This was sort of, was actually funded by Bill Gates. And actually I know the guy, the engineer was head of that project and basically built a really cool laser that could hit a mosquito with the laser, use the laser to measure the wing beats because female mosquitoes, which carry malaria have a faster wing beat or different rate than males. And if it was a female, fry them. And you'd watch these mosquitoes just fall right out of the air. Now, you could build a very simple system that, if it hears the sound of a drone, could locate general area of the sky where it is, then use a camera to spot the drone, identify it, and then use... I've got a laser sitting in my closet that would be powerful enough to drop a drone, which, as you point out, would be illegal. But the technology is really... Of course, that laser, too, if I put, you know, your face into the image recognition system and there's a okay there's a problem there but right. <laughs> <laughs> um i wonder know, we have these technologies uh, if I, they become a real problem but will I, they become a real problem I, I wonder how that parallels like the the protecting say a plot of property from drones uh how, how that parallels you know constructing and protecting a piece of property from street traffic and and uh, autom automobiles right you can build a fence uh, but you can't necessarily shoot someone who you don't like to be there. You can't even, you couldn't, could you necessarily, or and would you want to incapacitate someone I mean, who I, I would say may uh, not even know that they want to be on your property? I, I believe that it is legal in the state of Texas to shoot trespassers. And uh, all you need to do mm -hmm. is put up a Senate set sign that says trespassers will be shot and then you can shoot people. And so, sure. if, but, if, but do you want to make a system that goes to that level? Uh, for people or for drones? I mean, I, I'm I'm looking at the parallels between these two ideas. Uh, yeah, no. In in that regard, um, if if drones have more rights than humans, that does change things interestingly. Uh, where you're not allowed to shoot down a drone, but you are allowed to shoot a human. I don't know. Hmm. Well, that, that might be a thing too. Is can you shoot down a drone on your own property or this? Right. You know, like the idea of. You know, it's it's going to be. It's, I think we're going to hear more of this because it's not at the point where it's like, I mean, Grant, a drone going into an aircraft engine is a problem. Um, for the rest of us, it's not a problem yet, but it is one of those things where all of a sudden, you know, we'll see. You're, you'll get the period where it just makes more news than it makes problems, but then eventually these things can become problematic. You know, um, whether well, you consider a problem or not. You know, drones are used now to smuggle drugs across the border. It's used considerably, you know, using, you know, um, those means. Sorry, yeah. Justin. Oh, yeah. Just just one one final point on the shooting thing. I think there will always be the question of shooting with a gun because at some point the bullet comes mm -hmm. down. You miss. Yeah. So like that will always be a hard no. However, in the world where we have, you know, a, a targeted microwave thing that that you can just disable and and injure a drone without there being a projectile that could fall somewhere else, like now the question is, what what what, what like what are the 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 uh, uh, corollaries that we can say are is that like that? Oh, you I accidentally uh, 
uh, my, my, my car was on your property, so you're allowed to destroy it. You're allowed to rip out the engine. The, uh, the, the microwave thing is, it's if you want to protect a drone from that, it's not hard. That'll stop, you know, the, the, the regular one that you can buy, you know, the hobby shop or whatever. But the, the, the microwave ones either will... The, the simpler ones just interfere with the signal and make the drone lose control. But if you have the drone pre-programmed to maintain a flight path, won't do anything. The ones that are designed to scramble electronics, which are much more higher power, and that's military grade, those are harder. But you can actually build systems that can handle that. You know, and get to the point where a microwave thing really does damage. It's got to be a really high intensity power thing, and it's hard to direct it. You're basically shooting a laser out there. Sure, but you can also do uh, intercept drones that just go out and squirt silly string. So drone oh, flies Oh, no, up. Brian, I agree. I yeah. think that's going to be more like, I think that you're going to want to have, you know, they've, they've, some people have been training hawks to do that and all that, but absolutely your point. I think it's going to be other technology like that. Like you're going to have, you're going to have the, our drone, which is going to be the one that's going to go capture the other drones and drag it out of the sky. So, right, right. What, what do you think the likelihood of the drone manufacturers are to release some sort of tool or, or API to allow people on a commercial level to build a geofence. I mean, they're, they're, they're already a... doing that. Uh, DJI uh, uh, has like, there's a consortium of, of geofencing and, and best practices mm -hmm. that uh, DJI is working on. I'm sure there are other competing ones. I'm sure everybody, like they're all on the same page in terms of, Hey man, we want more drones and more drones to be sold, and and let's let's get out in front of this and make sure that they auto shut off if the GPS detects that you're trying to fly a drone towards you know say a, a football stadium or and and of course they they even have systems that uh, live update where you can fly it at a uh, football stadium with but it updates to know when when there there's an event going on and when there isn't right. Um, but so, but so even I, on a on a residential I mean on a residential level, if you could, if DJI, DJI started playing the other side of the field of like, hey, sign up for our DJI geofence, and if someone tries to fly a drone near your house, they'll get a message that says, hey, I, don't do that, I'm going to shoot you. Before we get there, we'll shoot get we'll, we'll do some kind of version of a do not call registry, where it's just like, hey, you can opt in on the the national database, you can make your a uh, your property. As long as it's over, I don't know, let's say three acres or whatever, you can opt in to a, a do not fly registry and, and automatically all DJI drones will automatically not be able to pass that geofence mm -hmm. uh, uh, un, 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 without your permission or something like that. Yeah. I mean, I guess my question yeah. is, what is the likelihood that that's something that happens in the next two years? I, or it, I'd say 100% almost. I, I, I would... It, uh, I, I think an initiative of that type, whether or not it's successful, I don't know. But I think I think that they're being very proactive. Yes, and but the 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 challenge, like I have a I have a project I've been funding that's a drone related. We use Pixhawk, which is autonomous drone software, and that's completely open source. We can program and do anything. So you're always gonna, if you're a bad actor, which we are not, but you're always going to have the option to say, no, not going to use it. I'm going to use my own flight controllers and do this and not do that. So I think, yes, we'll have like, you know, because like Brian's point, like I think, yeah, I think DJI and Phantom, they're going to want to like, hey, we don't want, we don't want people to accuse us of using this for this, you know, and, you know, it may get to a point where if it is a problem that it might be, you know, the government might push to say you've got to use, you know, licensed FCC's got a FAA's got to license the software that you use on this, mm -hmm. and if it doesn't have back doors or things like this, then it's illegal. I could see it going that direction. Weirdly, uh, this whole problem is going to come down to sort of a I don't know, like it's back to the 1950s, and there used to be a problem where uh, somebody who wanted people to respect his property rights, maybe there were some kids, and the shortest way to get home from school was for them to cut across old old McGillicuddy's land, and he wanted to chase them off, so he would come out, shake a gun, shoot it, scare them. Say get you know get off my property. You guys take the long way around, and they don't want to do that. And then eventually, uh, you know, hopefully they yeah, incentives became aligned and they worked it out. I think we're going to see a version of that where, as we have personal shopping drones, either personal property or rented Uber style, to deliver me stuff. Where it's like, ah, oh, man, it's just more expensive. It takes 15 more minutes for my package to get delivered just because McGillicuddy doesn't want me to fly over his airspace. Uh, uh, you know. I, that that's the kind of low rent property disputes I think we're going to have about airspace uh, sub five hundred meters. Oh yeah, I, let's 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 dive into this for our two thousand nineteen episode. Um, drone delivery. 
Do you see it? I can see in rural areas drone delivery. Do you see it in the suburbs as a thing? Uh, yeah, but it'll be. I don't know where you where you would del. I, mean, I guess you could deliver to the door, but that that's a. I don't. I don't know if the technology is the technology there to do that. Um, you wouldn't because there would be safety concerns with with kids uh, running up and messing with them. So instead, I think you would have, uh, for example, in our neighborhood, uh, there are no po- uh, there are no post boxes. You have a central instead, mailbox. it's just one central area. So similarly, there'll just be a pad on top of that that mm-hmm. that that you know goes and then once uh, th- you know thrice a day, a person like all the all the packages collect there. Uh, throughout the day, three times a day, someone goes upstairs, takes them down, and uh, 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 puts them in in bins or whatever. Hmm. I could totally see that, I, and I could see that this year. Ah, uh, you want to know what I see before that is a super popular, like everyone's got to have it commercial drug, like not a hobbyist kind of thing, but like hottest present of. 2019's Christmas, like uh, uh, your personal drone, and, the, and it'll the be fetch like, it, or where it's yeah, like these the, businesses the, are fetch it enabled. Uh, if mm-hmm. you want your thing, go out to your back, your own backyard on your own pad, ten by ten meters. Uh, uh, send off your fetch it, and your fetch it comes back with the pizza, the the anything that you might take a ten minute drive to go get. The fetch it can uh, as yeah, long I, as somebody I was, else. I wasn't even thinking uh, necessarily a, a, a delivery, although that that would certainly uh, factor into that model. Uh, just but, getting but even drones, more, just and, that it's like yeah. cheap, reliable, and has enough of a battery that unlike other cheap drones, when you know you get five seconds out of it, and then it's like okay, got to charge it again. Uh, 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 I don't think it's hard to envision the technology behind a system where you have, and I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't think you do the personal one because it's going to be idle ninety nine percent of the time, and it's easier like like ride sharing to be drone sharing to like have one to do delivery. My issue comes down to the noise factor. Like, they're noisy. They're really, really. It's one of the reasons why flying cars in the current iterations I don't see. I think there could be other f- forms of technology we might see it, but like flying cars. You know, it's like imagine 40 drones all together outside your window right now as your neighbor takes off or lands or that going on. Mm-hmm. Nobody will want to tolerate that. On top of a building in the middle of downtown where it's further away, you know, et cetera, different. Brian's case, because like I was very dismissive of just suburb drones, but then I thought, well, Brian's slightly more rural suburb. And I could see your example of like, hey, we have this mailbox thing at the end of the street over there where we could have things dropped off to could be a drop off point. And I went back towards like, well, maybe that could, maybe that, that would be a, you're not going to do it for Justin's place because he's in the middle of Oakland. You're not going to hear for me because I live in a very, very dense environment, but mm-hmm. where you're at, like, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that will be more in rural and, you know, semi suburb or rural environments. Well, and and uh, I hadn't even really thought of the full rural areas because there are places where, it's a 30 minute drive to get to the grocery store and yet you're only four miles as the crow flies. And so if you're getting stuff delivered, it's like, if I have to go, that's a 90 minute round trip to get a gallon of milk. If I could press a button and pay $20 for a single gallon of milk, but it's here in 20 minutes. Like if, if I'm living in the country, that seems uh, imminently doable. Like for for you, Brian, to, to, to go to your local H E B is a pain in the butt unless you're getting a lot of stuff. Right, right, right. But, like, I could see off the roof of that HEB, you know, there's some sales guy that goes around this year and asks for all the little sub-developments, like, hey, congratulations, you guys are in the radius of uh, where we would like to do a pilot program for for drone delivery. Like, that I could that I could see. And also, to Andrew's point, that's a loud little intersection that that the uh, uh, HEB is on. It only would go further out into open space. Yeah, you'd probably go over some people's houses, and maybe they would find it annoying. You might get some complaints mm-hmm. there. But I think if you mostly stuck to the road, uh, it wouldn't be any louder uh, uh, than uh, it would be otherwise. Plus, also, yes, drones are surprisingly loud when they're right in front of you. But I think they're still quieter than a car right in front of you. And I know they're quieter than an air uh, jet engine in front of you. Uh, and it is surprising to me, once you get past 100 meters, 200 meters up, they do become fairly quiet. They're, they're pretty much uh, non-existent. Uh, I, will, I will say this. From my apartment last night, as we were in bed, as the ball was dropping, 
I could audibly hear humming of drones outside of my window, assuming that there is, because there's a, a big drone community around the lake, Lake Merritt, that people will go up and have their little VR goggles to like uh, see out of, of what, what, what the drone is seeing. It is 2019. It is. No, <laughs> it's weird. Uh, but I could, I could, uh, you could make out amongst the popping of the fireworks, the that mm. that trademark, like that 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 drone humming. Sure, but I, I would say that. Do you think that? Uh, yes, you could identify it, and it is distinctive. But uh, is it louder than than the cars? I mean, considering we don't have a lot of car traffic, it was something that, like, it was I, just I, noticeable. I, I, I'm I am I am with you in that. Last night, having heard it, I was like, you want to know what? I could imagine in 10 years that just becoming, you know, when everybody, any people who live in big cities go out to the country and they're like, oh, wow, it's so quiet. And what you realize is that, no, it's just that you're used to tuning out a lot. You know, there's already a, a cacophony of sounds that we just, our brains are like, yeah, uh, uh, not useful. Uh, and and this is just going to be the latest uh, in a symphony of garbage we want to tune out. I, I, I last night was the first time that I ever thought of it like that, where it's like, that's definitely drones. I can hear drones moving and uh, God knows where they are. They could be off the roof of my uh, a building. They could be off the roof of uh, another building. They could just be a collection of them downtown. Uh, but I could hear it. And I was like, eh, you know, I, I could. It's interesting to me now. I could see myself like tuning it out it's a are we gonna see like a company that's gonna that's like uber did a brilliant job in carving out so we're gonna go to this city here we're gonna fight for the right to be able to do ride sharing we're gonna legally whatever do this we know there's a need we're gonna do this and we'll expand outwards you know, drone, tons of people working on drone delivery, that's for sure. But are we going to see somebody say, hey, we're going to put together kind of like the Uber for this, like, hey, when you're in this area, you pull out your phone and hear all the things that you can get in 10 minutes. Oh, 100%. Yeah, but I think I think you nailed it, Andrew, in that much the way satellite internet um, and satellite, you know, sat phones or whatever uh, was a rural headed inward uh solution so too will this be because i think i think it'll be very expensive you know take take the tesla uh example of of take the people who can afford to uh spend uh, the wealthy rural are going to say are you kidding me i could save two hour drive uh for for these sundry elements a hundred percent i'm in uh, uh sign me up and there's going to be fewer restrictions few less red tape for them to go through to set it up in fact i would be surprised if somebody's not already knocking on doors, signing up people for this kind of thing at this very moment. And you could think about, I was thinking about the noise factor and the safety factor. Imagine the drone dirigible. Sure. Uh, yeah, that, that would increase the range. Uh, it would alter the timeline just a little bit, but, uh, but uh, it would increase the payload. And uh, yeah, no, that, that, that would make total sense. You wouldn't worry as much about it falling, you know, because it's not. It's, it it you know, would be quieter, quieter. right? And um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm surprised we're not seeing more of those. Uh, a drone dirigible? Yeah. I, I, can you break that out for me? I I mean, well, are we talking about like a mega drone? Like, well, yeah. Or let's say, let's say. I it's literally a, don't know what what those pic, words mean. So. Pi uh, picture what? a weather balloon. Picture a picture a ten yeah. foot weather balloon. Okay. And so now all of a sudden you could carry instead of one pound or five pounds, you're able to carry carry 75 pounds of payload and it, it moves slower than a traditional quadcopter but uh, but it's got you know maybe a, a couple of like like on the side of the goodyear blimp you set it up and and it takes you know 40 minutes to get uh, however far but it's got a massive payload um and it's much more efficient however then you have it can't it can't <clears throat> operate under certain weather conditions uh but uh, but basically just a drone blimp in order to get bigger payloads Okay. There's so, a so company you, working you're on sacrificing speed for Payload. a quieter product and a more reliable product. Yeah, and you're you're fine because the, the the radius in which you'd want to use a drone often is just you know four or five miles or something. You know, so 
I think you're fine. It, the drones are way too fast in many times for what you really would need. There's a company coming out with something kind of really cool. The name is ridiculous. Have you heard about the Plimp? The Plimp? A plimp. That sounds like just a blimp with uh, that's purple. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. No, my friends. The Plimp, it's a blimp. It's a blimp meets a plane. Right on. <laughs> Wait a minute. You can ride in it? Yeah. 2,000 pounds. Wow. Wow. That's 93 big. miles an hour. So what we're looking at is imagine it's it's not it's it's a got a big air uh, like a helium bag attached to an electric to an airframe and so the idea is that this thing isn't does isn't positively buoyant. It sinks, but because it has that helium bag with a little bit of propeller power, it starts to move upwards. And so the idea is that you're not using so much power to create vertical lift. And this is a great tech that I think may have a lot of potential for delivery and stuff like that because, you know, you see if a plimp crashes, it's just sort of a slower kind of crash. Yeah, so it's it's moving slower. I assume it's more energy efficient as well because you're not having to go uh, so fast or blast uh, jet engines to, so you don't need nearly as mm -hmm. much fuel. That's crazy. I think a plimp is a great idea because what you're doing is you're you're combining two really good. You know, lighter than air is great because it takes less energy. You fl you know you're not spending as much energy to gain altitude. It's crashes slower. I watched. I saw a Goodyear blimp crash. I told you about this, right? Mm, I don't remember this. Holy cow! So, back in Florida, I'm driving around, and I look up and I see this blimp spiraling and kind of going really 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 slow to the ground i'm like what the hell is going on and then i see this thing go down go further down i get home and i read this blimp crashed in the storage they took it down a storage and the, the pilots were fine and i'm like this is cool this isn't that far away i got my my pro simmer my canon xl1 ran down there got out of there and like oh you're media go over here they push me into a media pool they said we're gonna be letting you in one by one and they led us into the area where they were, the blimp had just deflated there. And I'm like, man, if all crashes were like this. Wow. Where, yeah. where everybody su uh, survived and it was just like, oh, everybody, let's all gawk. This is pretty cool. Yeah. One by yeah, and one, to clean up. don't spend more than 10 minutes. Come on, well, let's, let's get everybody in here for their awesome uh, <laughs> Pretty much video. what happened. And to clean up, they, they need to use scissors. You know, <laughs> you, kind of, you just cut it up like. Wow, that's amazing. So no, that 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 I I, yeah, I think we're going to that I would like that to me is specifically in an area like this where you had a lot of people with daily commutes that are absolutely snarled in traffic over a fairly significant uh, a way to go. Uh, uh, or distance between going from like San Francisco or Oakland down to the South Bay and Palo Alto and Mountain View and Cupertino. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm going to, that, that would be my 2019 lock is that I'm going to see the, the plimp ride share, uh, uh, you know, a couple tech pros going in on a, on a, on a plimp membership for a daily commute. Yeah. I, I see that. I really do see as a possibility of that more so than just straight up quadcopters because the idea of less noise in theory, uh, it's got wind problems. Adjusting the wind is problematic. It's one of the problems then because you have a large, large bag, but, you know, large vessel that's able to be that. But there's a safety factor. It's safer um, if it's less noisy. I know. So theoretically, you, the, 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 you would be clipping down there at the bottom, like into a... Yeah. They would make some sort of passenger module, I guess, that attaches mm -hmm. here. Man, I can't wait until that's one of the uh, uh, perks of working at Google is that you can park your plimp. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we'll do rideshare plimping, you know, because... Yeah. You have to take yeah. the Google plimp. So here's the, the Model J. Thank you for your interest in Egan Airship's Model J, a plummet-proof, ultra-safe aircraft. The revolutionary, expert-designed hybrid airship integrates reliable speed and performance in a unique combination of blimp and plane. 
eight passengers or 2,000 pounds in its spacious cabin, which can easily be reconfigured to enable any number of tasks for payload. Hmm. This air tra- airship can travel fully laden at over 80 miles per hour and offers an aloft cruising time of over five hours with a range of 320 miles. Wild. With its vertical wow. takeoff and landing, it can lift or touch down just about anywhere. Uh, it's got a... It's, has it won't it's heat you know it's it's not lighter than air but it uses helium so it's it, it won't just float away which that's one of the problems the blimps in general is having to let go of like the helium but here's the cost ready hmm. this remarkable hybrid airship can be yours for one million dollar a year for four years plus overages one million dollars a year for four years. Right. They we anticipate four years of building for building an aircraft production facility, testing the airship, and obtaining an FAA. Uh, but yeah, a million dollars. So you need to pay them for four years as they build it. Yeah, yeah. If, well, if you want to be an early adopter, that, that, that you're agreeing to have it, spend it for four. Yeah, it's like if you're buying it or leasing it. For uh, agreeing to a four-year lease and paying them a million a year, sounds like you're prepaying to in to be in on the first generation. Mm-hmm. All right, plump people, you got to clear this up here. You know, we were we were had our finger ready to buy it. Because <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's say you have one, right? They, they say they say hypothetically they need twenty. Oh, they say if uh, they. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Justin. This is uh, what I, thought it was. I was just trying to do the math. On, uh, oh, actually, here I, I was. Well, first, I was trying to take a look at what we could get to, uh, uh with with that kind of distance. As I'm looking up, as as the crow flies, uh, <laughs> distances for like L.A. to San Francisco or L.A. to Oakland. So it'd be out of that range. You'd have to land, you know, somewhere in Fresno or something. I, I guess that to to to. And it's 80 miles an hour. You're not. You're. You're not you're, really you're, saving you're, that much. This is this is this is. Downtown LA to Bel Air, rush hour. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I definitely could see it going from San Francisco to Palo Alto, like, uh, uh like that. That I think is something that, y- if you were able to do that, like at ninety miles an hour, like with uh, only on roads, that's really not that bad of a drive. Uh, if it's in traffic, you want to shoot yourself. Is that the model for this? Is instead they should they should say we're going to pick a route like that. We're going to pick you know a some central place in San Francisco to there and say we're going to start a service later next year. I mean, like, that, if, that if you could what run I was it, trying to do is figure out exactly what our seed money, our ask is, uh, and and which uh, uh, high rise we are trying to uh, attract as our uh, uh, plimp uh, takeoff, and then we just land them right in the middle of the South Bay, and then. They can get picked up by all their all their campus buses. And I think we even did talk sometime last year about someone trying to do the same thing. Yeah, it was going to be like a hexacopter single Uber, person Uber, pod. Yeah, or, yeah the Uber, drone Uber bus. Thing like that. Although I think that that might have been the the colonic uh, uh, regime. Mm. I, I don't know whether or not that's in the. Uh... No, that's the new. That's the. I mean, that's still. Was that still a thing? Yeah, because, I mean, that's been, I think Colada was really the self-driving, and they've been actually spending less on that. And I think because now they're looking at, like, other areas of transportation. So Uber Air is post clinic So I don't, I don't want to see all these things. And I don't, you know, I'm rarely dismissive of something outright. I'm like, oh, that's stupid. That'll never work. Because it's like, hey, you know, surprise me. Um, but Uber Air sounds like it's it's, it's, like a, it's electric helicopters, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I guess that's the thing is like, like, really, what, what's, what's the breakthrough that, where? I mean, I guess it's battery tech that as battery tech yeah. gets cheaper and cheaper, self driving that... too, no pilots. Sure. Although, like, that's not as crazy, right? You know, uh, I feel like like uh, air travel has always been leaps and bounds beyond an, in, uh, uh, you know, autopilot scenarios, right? Yeah, but we don't. We nobody gets on a commercial airplane yet with no pilot. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, hmm. So I love how they don't show the prices on it. Uh, um, <laughs> no. But yeah, uh, let me do one more kind of cool 2019 spin to scene. It's something we talked about the week before. Uh, Brian, even following what's been going on in Boca Chica, Texas. 
Uh, SpaceX. No, no, I have not, man. Uh, bring me the latest in my own backyard. You'd think I'd be all caught up on this. Should be. Well, eagle-eyed viewers, spotters, have been driving by Boca Chica is this uh, facility they have in South Texas where they plan to be, you know, basically the launch facility they want to use, their own privately owned launch facility. And people have spotted something kind of interesting. If we go to the Reddit, uh, if you want, I like going to Reddit, sp the SpaceX Reddit, and there's a lot of little links there. If you go to um, <clears throat> any one of those, the, that page, either SpaceX or SpaceX Lounge, you'll see some cool photos there. Um, Bryce, do you want me to send you something, or are you good? Is is the one we're showing not? Yeah, that's it. There's there's newer photos. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll Brian, care to describe what you're looking at? Oh, I, I, these are the photos of the uh, of, 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 of formerly BFR, now Spaceship. Jesus, would you guys quit changing the name of the freaking thing? Why? Well, I, I don't <laughs> understand the value of changing the name 25 times, but whatever. Uh, it's big. It's very, very big. It looks like a spaceship. This is the hopper. This is the hopper they're planning to test it. They're going to use three Raptor engines in this thing, and there was a lot of speculation before that, oh, it's water tower. They're not building this. And like, yeah, nope, they're building the hopper. And we're watching this thing be assembled right now. With the specifically, the hopper is basically just designed to, uh, uh, to to test its ability to land vertically and all that stuff, to, to take off and land yep. vertically? Test the engines vertically, you know, take off and land. It's going to be, it's like a third, it's like half scale or two-thirds scale of the actual Starship is going to be. And Elon Musk has said they want to test this in... March or April? Wow. wow! You think that'll be a publicly a, a spectacle, or, or do you think they'll they'll just quietly do it and then release video? It'll it'll it'll, 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 it'll be on the IG. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I mean, certainly, but but I mean, if it's if it's if it's in my backyard, that might be worth a trip. Yeah, yeah. it'll be hard. I don't know if they'll announce specifically a, to, to when they're going to do it, uh, but I think that there will be probably a lot of people starting to watch, waiting for to see this thing happen. Um, so it's kind of cool. So you see this, this is, this looks sort of rougher than, you know, the, the finished product. I mean, this is the goal here is just to test the engines, the capability. It's the first time they're using methane and to test it as a lifting capabilities. But man, if we're not going to see a prototype taking off and landing first half of this year is real possibility. So, Crazy. That's you know. Okie dokie. Uh, any last minute predictions for 2019? Uh, uh, yes. Weird things will be even better. Cool. Hot take. Uh, hey, man, you guys got any picks? I do. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Last night, I watched, uh, went to my Apple TV, fired up Netflix, looking for something to watch to ring in the new year. Uh, clicked on. The new Black Mirror Choose Your Own Adventure Bandersnatch. Uh, I was told I can't watch it. You cannot do it. They show you a two-minute video that says, hey, no. And then, did this happen to you where they send you an email immediately after saying, hey, you know that thing you tried to do? You can't do that on the Apple TV. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, a, a lot of the Netflix stuff goes to my spam at this point, but I have no doubt that I did. Yeah. Uh they uh, uh, we then plugged in my uh, wife's laptop and uh, actually watched it. Um, it is interesting. I, uh, look, I inherently think that that kind of storytelling, and I don't mean interactive necessarily or choose your own adventure necessarily, uh, but video choose your own adventure is kind of inherently awful. Flawed. It's it's just yeah it's just number one it puts so much weight on which decisions you are trying to allow people to make uh, there and and look in classic Black Mirror fashion the episode the, the the movie is about the idea of a choose your own adventure and the decisions that you do and don't give the people uh, uh, to do it at the end of the day I really I kind of would have just preferred three versions of the movie that I could watch. Like, I, I think maybe the... Or the, or, or, or the ending of the movie Clue, where it's like, that might be yeah. how it happened. It could have gone like this. But effectively, that's, that's what happens at the end, is you 
uh, basically like you finish your line of the story and then it takes you back to mm -hmm. other points that would have made substantial changes mm -hmm. to your narrative and they just tell you oh this time pick the thing uh, or this yeah. time pick the pick the other thing and, and it's all it's all a little inelegant especially cuz it has game overs basically and yes. in in a lot of cases it's incredibly abrupt of just like ooh you want to go back and it and it's 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 like some cases like oh okay, you destroyed a thing that probably can't move the story forward but 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 it's 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 oh it's frustrating because it's it's an alright idea but I don't think that they set good expectations with it. You know what would have been more Black Mirror E, uh, whether they had the technology to do it or not, whether they sort of lied and made it a nonsense engine. Imagine having to turn on a webcam, and then there's a brief orientation where it says smile, frown, uh, squint, you know, do this stuff, and then you just got enough, you got enough proof that it that it that that it establishes. Okay, it's definitely tracking my emotions. And then it says, all right, we're going to watch you watch this, and we're going to make some decisions as we go. And you don't have to think or say or do nothing. We're just going to change the story. Uh, we're we're going to make selections based on what we see from you. Like, uh, here's – so, number one, that idea is, I think, baked into the Bandersnatch story in, in where it goes because in, in very Black Mirror kind of fashion, A, you're watching a Black Mirror story, which if you enjoy Black Mirror – it usually means that horrifying things happen to characters that you either like or don't like, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy watching it because I would probably not make these decisions if I were a, a, a storyteller. Th that it often veers into bleak, hopelessness, uh, 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 violent places that I don't want to have happen with somebody that I have now learned to like. Uh, and yet it put me in the position of being like, okay, no, am I doing the story that I want, or am I doing a Black Mirror story? And now they keep trying to push me into these these decisions that I kind of don't want to make. I, I want everybody to start communicating more and, and just get through <laughs> this problem instead of it uh, uh, devolving into something horrifying, which of course is the brand of Black Mirror. I would be a bad Black Mirror author, and I felt that that's what I was doing as I kept Picking the safer choices for all of uh, all of my decision making. Well, and, and that makes it tough because uh, you're right. Black Mirror, almost every episode of Black Mirror has a like horrifying bad ending, an ending of despair. And the way Bandersnatch is sort of structured is much like an FMV game, where and and you want to win, right? You get all of this emotional um, th this emotional connection to the, to the main character, but you're only given the options to essentially torture this guy and any any the deviations from that you know don't get you to the end of the story and that's that's a that's a very tough mismatch and that in the little bit of that of it that I watched because I only got I guess one of the endings uh isn't addressed at all like 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 outside of the fact that there is some relationship between the, the the viewer and the main character, the viewer clearly has its own limitations, and that's not even a factor into this. So it's it is very much kind of what you were saying, Justin. Like, I, am I doing what they want, or am, do what is what is my or amount do I, of or do I want to win? Right. Yeah. Here's here's the problem in interactive fiction formats like this, and. I say this as a guy that's got a table filled with about 100 choose your own adventure books and gameplay books and all this, who's fascinated by this and who has no easy answers, but problems. And that is, there is a point at which a really good interactive story, it just be, it is a game, not just, it just becomes a game, a game. And you have to say, what's the difference between a game and interactive fiction? And there are no rules, but... You know, when you start making those choices or how much choice you put in there as an author is sort of, you know, what you have to do. And I think that that's what we talked about before the show. Like, I haven't watched this yet, at, you know, and, and I literally am like booting up right now. I built my own interactive fiction creation platform because I wanted to, you know, make it easier to try to write hypertext stuff and all this. And I didn't think Twine or what other things they do it would serve my purposes. But I think... I'm glad they did it. The problem is, is you don't get a you don't get you don't get a lot of opportunities to experiment and do this. And you know the fact that when this thing launched, it didn't work on Chrome. 
Oh. Uh. Okay, hold on. We'll get we'll get them back on the line. Here, we're definitely. This will be a definite edit point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll run to the restroom. Oh, I mean, well, okay. I would say from from that perspective, uh, uh, it oftentimes felt to me that the decisions were trivial uh, to the point where it's like, all right, are you just making me pick like which soda do you want to pick up? Yeah. The soda or the red soda? And it's like, all right, are these just code words for two different like like uh, if he picks the green soda, is his hand gonna explode? And if he picks the red soda, is his old girlfriend gonna call? Because that that's not really what I'm choosing. I'm I, like I, I I don't know whether or not these are artificial branch paths or yeah. not. Yeah, can you choose your own adventure hey guys, stories? Guys, sort of those are left turn, right turn. Right. Guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we we dropped out of the call and and I think you guys kept going. Um, oh. <laughs> we we lost everything after Andrew said Chromecast. Right. Um, if we can roll that back, okay. Oh, our, yeah. our oh, Skype crashed. You were uh, Andrew. You were just making the Sorry. point that uh, one side of Netflix didn't know what was talking to the other. Yeah, that's because it didn't work on either ones. But then you get into the the storytelling problem of, uh, you know, left hand. Do I go left or do I go right? Well, those, the, those are great video game choices. But for storytelling, I don't know the difference between the two. And and really bad choose your own adventure stories are like that. I went left. I went right. It's an arbitrary. It's a flip of coin. What difference does it make? And that that I think is ultimately the problem is that there's a lot of those where it's like I trust Black Mirror. I trust Black Mirror to be like, OK, I'll, I'll bet you I'll like left as much as right. But I don't know. And it made me anxious to be like, oh, wait, if I choose this 80s song instead of this 80s song to play on his Walkman, like, does that mean that I'm now I'm fundamentally different? than I was otherwise, because that kind of seems stupid. I don't know what the other band is. I know who the Thompson Twins are. Stop bothering me, Bandersnatch. <laughs> like, just show me this movie. Well, and it takes, it kind of takes a long time, too, right, in in this this sort of film format. You have to, it's not like a, like a visual novel, which is what you would base this sort of structure on, where you can quickly skip through a lot of text and just be choice-focused as you explore your way through it again. You have to sit through and rewatch the movie. And that that could be really frustrating. Wait a minute, not... did it not, did it not kick you back to just watch other stuff like at the end after the credits rolled? Well, uh, I know when we got to a game over, it would let us go back to different points to start over. But when we got to the end of the credits, um, it was like, hey, you're done. You like you saw like this epi like an actual full ending with with the whole credits thing, and we didn't sit through the credits, and it didn't offer to when when it we took the offer to take us back it went to cho to a choice that we had already tried again and failed at and so it it it, it didn't yeah, offer so, to take us back far enough so yeah the, what, what happened for me is once i got to the end and it like credits roll then at that point there was just uh it kept bringing us back to a point in the story with uh the note on what you should do this time and then you would start it, and it would basically kick us back into the story. Oh, it told you what to do. Uh, yeah. Oh, I and I want because I know that there are multiple full endings, and so I wonder if the one that we got because it's this ending was also self-referential, whether we just ended up on a true ending, and it they, they considered that to complete the circle, and we just slipped yeah, into I, that. I understood that the mark of the ending is his game being reviewed. And I, I mm -hmm. saw multiple versions of that. So right, no spoilers. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> no the, thing I, and choose your own. the thing I saw had an epilogue to that whole idea, um, which felt very, yeah. felt very much like an ending, but then it doesn't make me want to go back and explore this other stuff, especially if that's like the right one, quote unquote. Can I, can I show you something real quick? This was the tool that I made for writing interactive fiction. Okay. Uh, I wanted to write, and so what I did is I created, hold on, let me learn how to make sure I've got this. So what I did is I created a system where you can you can start a story, right? And if you create add a path, you get a path, you click on there, you write your scene. Um, let me go into one where I had like stuff written. If like, this is like an actual scene where you have, you know, more text written, you go in there, you get to the bottom, you can add these things, go to the next level. 
I wanted to create something that was just super easy to jump around into and create multiple paths okay. or create standalone paths. But, and then you can just jump in there and go back. Because uh, it's so hard to write these things. My point is these things are so hard to write. Mm -hmm. I thought, why don't I make a tool that allows you to just sort of jump around, make it quicker. You can visualize it, go in and out of it. Yeah. And then I also like this thing will export into all sorts of formats. If I want to preview this, uh, I can go into those and just um, you go into a preview version. It automatically does an HTML version of it. It'll do an ebook version of it. It'll do all that. Sure. So print book. So, and I know you, you mentioned Twine earlier, which is a, hi a hypertext mm -hmm. sort of choose your own adventure thing. What was it about Twine that? Uh... I don't. I I think that that it's not some of these things. I would argue are they're created by programmers who want to do interactive fiction, who aren't working from the writer or the creative side of their mind, and they feel like your their programming tools are just Twine is this. It's to me the interface was just not a good interface to work in. It wasn't a flow. This you can write and you can take here, you can take a, you can take a story, paste it into here, add an insertion point, say, I'm going to add a new point here, go off into this. It allows you to write a lot more like you're writing in Scrivener or a word processor without having to do any kind of coding or anything that feels like, um, whatever, you know, um, it just, I just, I just took like, what were all the problems I had with that? And so I've had a couple, you know, one other friend who's spent a lot of time in it, but I just kind of said, all right, this has been too much of an obsession for now. I'm going to do something else. Uh, okay. Cool. It works. It's functional, <laughs> but uh, Brian... I don't like twine. Twine to me just was not a, a twine, twine story. Twine is a sort it... twine stories became go left, go right. They didn't feel very, you know, they... it felt more like game development than story development. Hmm. Uh, hey man, <clears throat> my uh, uh, my pick is uh, I'm back again on uh, the dark dark tower. I'm I'm going for like my sixth lap of it because my uh, my brother gave Penny uh, all seven books and she's at the age of fourteen. So I, uh, I wanted to try to get her into the idea of it by reading just the beginning of the first book and then suddenly here I am halfway through book two, drawing of the three, doing my best impression of the greatest audiobook ever, uh, reader ever, Frank Muller, uh, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, are you on the first book? Like, uh, No, we're midway through the second book, the oh, well. drawing of the three, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, I have a pick, and it was uh, the champion of um, of the, the holiday break, uh, and that was Nailed It Holiday, the holiday edition, holiday season of the Netflix uh, cooking show Nailed It. Uh, man, is it fun. And it's 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 so light and breezy and everyone can enjoy it. Um, and, you know, I, I, I've talked about Nailed It before, um, uh, but it really works because everyone is in on the joke that these home cooks are not good at, you know, making cakes and stuff. So... When it yeah. comes out bad, uh, n no one's upset that it, it comes out bad because everyone knows that the expectation is super, super low. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think more of that is really great. And uh, I was surprised at how many I think they're like they did like seven episodes of this holiday season. So uh, there, it, was, it was more <laughs> than I expected even. But um, oh, wow. Yeah. I guess, I guess it's just cheap to produce. If, if they have the set, they might as well bang out more. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so nailed it holiday. That's on Netflix. Uh, my pick and there are sometimes you make recommendations and you say, Hey, I love this. If you don't love this, I'm not going to blame you. You know, we won't come to words. There'll be no fisticuffs. If you yeah. say, ah, it sucked. I didn't like it. I won't be like, no, you're wrong. Some things will be like, no, you, you're, you're just flat out wrong. Um, and the objectivist in me comes to the surface. Uh, but this is not one of those. This is one of those. I had fun. I really dug it. I've seen it twice now. And um, Aquaman. Yes! <laughs> it's, Aquaman. It's, Aquaman. <laughs> it's, it's a movie that knows what it is. And, and as Justin pointed out, there's a point at which an octopus plays the drums. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I forgot about and that. You're like, you're like, I'm on board. I get what this is. You know, you get you get you get a fight between two people, and you get their stats. And if you read the stats, it's funny, and you know, 
they were having fun with this movie. Mm -hmm. It's not a movie that takes itself too seriously. It wants to be likable and work on what they have. And I thought it did a pretty good job of that and enjoyed it. And the visuals I thought were amazing. Really relived it. The soundtrack I thought was fantastic. Um, if you don't like it, I don't blame you. Um, it's like, I know people who love Batman and Rob and I go, it's a horrible movie. They go, we know, but we love it. I'm like, okay, I get what cool. you're saying. I, you know, I want a Batman movie that I could learn from and become Batman from. You just wanted to be entertained. Fine. Mm, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, it's a but big... But Aquaman is what it is. It's, it's a, a big, dumb action movie. I went and saw it with, with my parents over the holidays. And, you know, it's... I, I will say, I, I do enjoy that it had a plot, which I feel like a lot of other superhero movies that I see don't always have an entire one of those. Um, but I, I, I enjoyed it. I was about halfway through it when I was like, oh, this is just national treasure, but in the water. And that totally yeah. works. <laughs> yeah, I used to describe, and I won't say what movie it is, but it was maybe magic themed. I said, it's like a dumber national treasure, which is saying a lot. Um, <laughs> and this is, this is a big, it's like national tre treasure meets avatar meets, mm -hmm. I don't know what. And I would say that, uh, I mean, between this and Wonder Woman, I mean, the, the further DC gets away from, and again, and I would say, oh, yeah, people, it was too dark. People don't like it. Like, yeah, Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises were too dark. Nobody saw them. But somehow they made a billion dollars each, you know? Mm -hmm. No, they were great movies. Those movies were great. We haven't had great movies in DC since, though. But I would say Wonder Woman's been really good and Aquaman's been really fun. And if DC keeps doing this, I'll be happy. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, you see it yet? I did, <clears throat> uh, but but uh, for the golden rule, uh, yeah. Let's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, what what uh, we could talk more about it in after things. Okay, cool. It's you know, I shouldn't say it. Oh no, Andrew, uh, uh, we 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 beseech you, please. Say well, it. Maybe our other host could say it. Oh well, I mean. If you, is that okay? Is that a, is that do I have? I any, don't know. Is it? I, is it? I don't know. Well, uh, uh, Equal power, man. I'll, I guess I'll try it out. Hey guys, it's been weird. Woo! He did it. He did the thing. <laughs> Great, Bryce. Any other any other things you want to take from me now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, quick break. Then after things. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Okay. Um. My mom has sent me a link to uh, the novelization of Bird Box on Amazon. It is three dollars, <laughs> and she says said to be scarier than the movie. We man, I don't know if you guys watched Bird Box, but oh, what uh, a... I, I I saw different things about it. You liked it? Uh, no, not really. Hey, I I think on paper it is a good like bad movie right like on paper there's a lot of good bad stuff in there yeah um but i think in execution it just never it, it never really lands um i mean that my, my big problem is that like if you look at the timeline of that story chronolo chronologically there's a very big interesting concept piece that happens with an apocalyptic event then yeah. there's a lot of really boring bottle stuff of being stuck in a house with a bunch of people and you don't really like any of them and then there's like an exciting action scene where the the which is, is what starts off the movie uh p partially is them leaving the house and going on the river and trying to go to the place um and to like break up all the bad stuff they intercut all the good stuff into it um as a way ways to like make that structure work as a movie but the movie's just too long and there's just so so much dumb stuff and it doesn't have an ending by the way bird box bird, bird box doesn't even have an ending yeah um uh yeah i think that's that's ultimately the problem is we're in a very fascinating time right now for like high concept horror mm -hmm. you know like uh and and I don't know whether or not it's sustainable. Like, 
uh, 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 Dead Polymers points out to uh, uh, the happening. And I think that might have been the last time that, like, post Sixth Sense, there was, like, this appetite for a major star wants to do a horror movie because horror is hot, right? Yeah. Uh, and so now you have Sandra Bullock, you know, about as dependable a female lead as you can get. And it's like, all right, well, Quiet Place did uh, 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 big money and, and you know, uh, uh, we, we're, we're talking about horror in this kind of different way, so let's do Are this. you going to spoil anything? No. I haven't seen it. So, okay, okay. No, yeah. no, no. So, so I haven't, uh, or, or, like, so it's like, all right, let's do this high concept horror thing. But it's like, it's really hard. It's hard to do. Uh, even you know, Quiet Place was was a movie that was great because it knew its limitations, and and yeah. it it really like wound up flashing about twenty percent of the potential premise of that, uh, 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 of I think that idea, uh, to its to its a uh, 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 great benefit. And you know, I, I could I could see that. That, that, that trend being like, oh, no, do more crazy stuff. Yeah, I think they both were both were went into production at the same time. So, you know, that that was a bird box suffered from, you know, taking a longer time to get to audiences. Yeah. yeah. I think the strength of A Quiet Place is like Walking Dead. I'm not a fan of Walking Dead, but I get that people like Walking Dead. And part of it because it's a great – there's a concept in TV called a procedural, which is every episode is what's – the procedure what's the you know what it, we're trying to solve this problem and walking dead has got this great problem dead people want to eat us what happens when we're stuck in a supermarket and they're outside what yeah. happens when we're in a bus it's like mythbusters in a way like like each you know we're going to keep trying to solve these problems of survival and give you new twists and a quiet place is cool because we'll give you the premise you got to be quiet or they get you what happens when, and they did it, it is a wonderful example of escalation. Like, mm -hmm. how do you live when they want to get you? How do you go get things when they want to get you? Now we're going to make it worse. How do you give birth when they want to get yeah. you? Like, the, the brilliance right. of that escalation of the conflict is, I don't, I mean, it got, it's got all the tension, well, it's great, but I think it's for people studying writing, it's a great thing to study and say, oh, they said, okay, you sort of see how they can kind of get along, but they fight, whatever, but now we'll see this, and then how do you deal with guilt in a world where you know everything's been taken from you, et cetera? Yeah, so. um, it's it's I like I th I know that you can compare Bird Box to A Quiet Place, but just the quality of the script is not it's just not there. You know, I bet the book is probably good, and I bet you can you could have the book tell that same story and have it have it be good for you know a novel but yeah. it just doesn't work in a two-hour film that doesn't have an ending all right no spoilers uh, i'm not spoiling anything so, i just don't are we are we just are, are we are we doing an aquaman spoiler i mean Best. we, we there, there's there's easily 30 minutes to talk about in all that right, let's thing. do that okay well then uh we'll just do that let me let me note that down here yeah, let's do this, Brian, after I made my whole point that if you don't like it, I totally get it. <laughs> <laughs> I went out of my way to make a point like, so well, I, like I don't I, like this. Having but, having talked about the movie with Brian, I, I don't think that it's it's it, it's a binary like uh, uh like oh it was bad for the following reason. Correct. Uh are are we gonna do any other topics? Uh or are we just gonna talk about Aquaman? Because if we're gonna do any other topics, we should do that before Aquaman spoilers. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm, but I'm, we, I'm all keyed up on Aquaman. I, I'm okay if we just keep it short. Yeah. And just talk about Aquaman. I don't yeah, know yeah. what you guys feel. Roshni says Happy New Year to everybody and to everybody Happy watching. New Year, Roshni. Rosh. Happy New Year, Roshni. You hear that? Yeah. She said. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do you guys think of that? Yeah. Great. Uh, do we want to do. Hey, look, I'm in Aquaman. My hair is floating and my scene is now done. Amazing. <laughs> oh, sorry. Andrew. I'll pay twenty dollars for that. Uh <laughs> anything we want to do up front? Any uh do we want to do our, our quick hey, do you have a New Year's pledge? Do you want to do that or uh I don't have anything for that. Yeah, me neither. All right, let's begin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh take it away in three, two. 
Hello and welcome to the After Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi, everybody. That's me. Brian Brushwood. Yup, yup. Justin Robert Young. Hola. Now, the reason I mentioned Bryce's name up front and just like everybody else's, Bryce is a full human being now. He's a real boy. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> You're like, guys, uh, I thought the point of this is that you would stop. I this uh, is a humanizing thing. Not yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we uh, we thought about doing a very detailed episode about New Year's resolutions, goals, books to read, exercise tips, dietary suggestions. Instead, we're going to give you our feedback on Aquaman. Yeah, which, which, by the way, is noteworthy in and of itself that, that you know, there are movies that that we tend to drop everything and just talk about for 30 minutes and after things. Um Traditionally, uh, they've been blockbusters of mega notable status like the Avengers and Infinity War or whatever. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Aquaman. <laughs> uh, on its path to be the highest grossing post Christopher Nolan DC movie. Oh, uh, I, I, I would bet that makes, that makes sense. sense. That tracks. Yeah. 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 Especially after the success of Wonder Woman and all the good word of mouth on it. That Yeah. So, first off, spoilers are going to start in about a minute if it's really possible to spoil a movie like Aquaman. Um, Is he going to save the world, guys? I don't know. <laughs> let's yeah, let's look, go around uh... and, and with our, do you know, each one make our suggestions to the audience. Should you see it? Should you not see it? Hmm. In our, our, our quick review. So if you just want that, you'll get that and then you can go see it and come back. Or yeah, not see it. And come de- uh, definitely see it. It's not as good as Wonder Woman, um, but it's uh, uh... Uh, I, 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 my review is I liked it a lot more once it was over. <laughs> and, and I mean that with, with genuine sincerity. And I mean that as a compliment, like once it was over and I wasn't dialed in on all the pacing and clumsy moments that felt awkward in the moment. Instead, like I look back and I'm like, man, we went to a lot of places and we got to see a lot of vignettes. And I'm really mm-hmm. thankful that all of that has real estate in my mind now. That's, that's my review. I will say in a vacuum I would recommend Aquaman, but I but I I actually I took my parents it's to like, go see this. Remember the postman when like the like Kevin Costner finds the movie theater and they only have like one movie to play or whatever? Is that your recommendation? Yeah. Well, <laughs> what I'm saying is like we had the de- I had the decision of making a movie choice for the family, and it was like, well, we can go see Aquaman because I've heard Aquaman's good, or. I can go see in, Into the Spider-Verse for the second time. And I don't know that I recommend Aquaman over <laughs> Spider-Man at all. Oh, well, you, well, no, no, goodness. But no. if you have the option to go see Aquaman, then I think it is worthy to see. It's a very impressive film. Uh, so you're saying uh, uh, if you're looking for a movie, uh, uh, you are not allowed the price of admission to going to see Aquaman. You have you to must already have, have seen already Spider-Man. Have seen. Yes. Yeah. All right. Into I'm Spider-verse. 100%. I will, I will <laughs> co-sign on that bill, sir, Senator. <laughs> Justin? the greatest movie of all time (laughs) (laughs) of this cinematic achievement is offensive and everyone needs to heed uh uh, this uh grave distressing uh, choice that you guys are both making look in all seriousness rarely have i been tickled with a movie more than Aquaman in, in in all seriousness. I do think that there is a trend in movies that I'm very much enjoying, which is just unironic adventure uh, uh, in, in a way that I think for the first time I watched a DC movie and I saw uh, a different brand than than Marvel. Uh, and we will get into kind of where where that gets specifically in the story. But between that and the fact that at a certain point you're like, well, now we know what would happen if uh, an Old Spice commercial was Lord of the Rings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like it's, I, I was, I was enjoying the movie, and then the world continued to expand, and no matter how you think about how it gets there, to me, specifically when we all we're doing is talking about extended universes and exploring every fringe of every popular IP that's ever happened. You can take a look at Aquaman and say, wow, 
all of these dumb little things involved in that mythology got their moment, felt different, and were enjoyable. I, I, like, like Brian said, I'm glad that I went. I didn't expect to go into that movie and be glad that I literally went to the four corners of every ocean, right? But I, I, I left being glad that I did. So in all seriousness, uh, it is it is a, a movie that I very much enjoyed watching. And, and, and I dare say, I love Into the Spider-Verse. I think Into the Spider-Verse is a, a, an achievement, right? But Into the Spider-Verse is a very complicated movie with a lot of meta enjoyment baked in. And that's why it's great. It's because it, it starts off in, in a way that is rewarding you for being a fan uh, uh, and, and using that trust to then take it into a lot of different places. Aquaman asks has no such <laughs> meta bargains that are pre-struck in your brain before you walk into the theater. You are learning all of this fresh, and it was a delight to do. I... I, you know, made my case. I recommend if you if you're open if you're open minded to a movie that has an octopus playing drums, you know, and know that that's the world, and know that the filmmakers knew this. This is not, you know, a Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Martha, <laughs> that's my mom's name too. And you're thinking people are probably laughing on the set, but shutting up because they don't want Snyder to hear them. And they're like, just, no, just don't say it. Just, just go with it. Aquaman, he's like, and then we're going to have an octopus playing drums. Absurd. I know. Isn't it great? Um, but it's like, I love Armageddon. Somebody says Armageddon's not a good movie. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to say like, I get it. There's, there's, You can like that movie or not like it. And I can tell you technically, I can explain that it's probably technically a better movie than many people realize but I can't tell you you have to like it. And I'm not going to tell anybody you have to like, to like it. Um, so, anyhow, that's it. So now we're going to jump into spoilers. So I want, I want you to imagine, a couple years ago, DC sort of struggled. You know, after Christopher Nolan, like, we were going to do this new thing. We do Man of Steel. Man of Steel does good numbers, but not great numbers. But they're hoping it's like Batman Begins, where, you know, Batman Begins did good, but not great. And then they did Dark Knight. And they're like, oh, my God, because... Batman Begins built and built and built and built and has actually made it into, I forget, uh, what list, like a, the best DC movie ever list for, you know, some people, which anyhow, DC is like, hey, maybe maybe we'll do Bat Man of Steel is our Batman Begins for Superman. Now we're going to do Batman versus Superman and we're going to build and it's going to be our, our own version of that. And the reaction's not as strong as you want, you know, and you're like, OK, but we've, we're going to we're going to introduce you know, Aquaman here. We're going to see these other characters build out the characters, or maybe even after Back to Man of Steel, and maybe there's a problematic launch. You bring in James Wan, right? You yeah. bring in James Wan, who's got, you know, a good track record. You know, he's been working in the horror franchises. He's been doing really well there. He's he's built up just a really good reputation there as both directing and producing. And you sit him down to the table. DC sits him down. Imagine you're James Wan. You're like, hey, we want to bring you into the superhero universe. We we want to out Marvel Marvel. We want to beat them. We want to we want to do our own thing. We want to be big. We want to be great. We want you to direct a superhero movie. And you're thinking, man, Batman's open, right? Bat Batman, Batman. I know, no, probably you know, Wonder Woman. Not going to Wonder Woman. Maybe maybe what else is there? It's Batman. Maybe they want to maybe let a different director take on Superman. You know, maybe I could do something maybe a little crazy like Green Lantern or something. Or you start thinking about the entire, you know, DC lineup and they're like, Aquaman. <laughs> you got Aquaman. What are you going to do? I mean, I mean the, the answer is anything you want. Like, yeah. what a gift to have something that nobody has any expectations. There's no baggage. You can't screw it up. Like, quite literally, uh, it's it's a free pass is what you've been handed. If you have, I mean, the, if you the, have the, the hardcores will be grateful that they're making a movie as long as you don't totally make the hero a, a, a something that is totally different than what they've come to love. If you can do a competent story... Uh, within that universe, the hardcores will be thrilled. If it's a good movie, mainstream audiences will be happy. Uh, it is a a good uh, a, a good position, much in the same way that you know James Gunn took Guardians of the Galaxy, which was like you looked at as like the 
who gives a rat's ass go bots version of the Avengers initially, and then turns into this gigantic phenomenon. Well, I would say, but Aquaman's always been a joke, though. Aquaman has always Aquaman been has a punchline. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, that's true. And so that's the problem you have is that you know the 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 least useful superhero, least useful member of the Super Friends. You know that's been, you know, part of the Justice League. You know, has been pointed out. So though I will uh, say, thinking back on the 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 journey of Aquaman in the film, I don't exactly know what is 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 impressive about him. Like like I feel like if like. I I don't walk away from Aquaman going, oh man, that's a legitimate superhero. I go away thinking, oh, this guy won half of the fights that he gets in in this movie, and was definitely just a bumbling idiot when he wasn't being like eye candy. Um, well, no, he was he was spending his days uh uh, uh foiling high tech uh, uh undersea piracy uh, uh before he gets into you know drinking contests with his dad. That's true. Uh, I I love the idea, like, because like they do this in the the mid credits, they come back to the Black Manta, you know. I'm like, oh, he's gonna come back. I love the idea that the Black Manta is gonna be this really sad superhero that keeps our villain that keeps showing up and getting his ass kicked. Yeah, <laughs> you know, in the middle of the movie, like, ah, Aquaman, I have you now. Punch, 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 like, Wah! revenge will be mine. And then we go back to the main plot. Uh, um, okay, so let's start with Black Manta. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact, <laughs> the fact that they, <laughs> that it's like mid piracy. I mean, I, 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 okay. Look, first of all, so, um, uh, uh, we have to stop and do exposition right now. Yeah, right. For about <laughs> five <laughs> uninterrupted and, minutes. And what's great? What's great is Black Manta keeps trying to walk you. off camera to get back to the piracy, and he keeps grabbing you like, no, no wait, wait here's knife. another thing you have to know about this knife. <laughs> I yes. Yes, I, I. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. He pulls out the knife. I never told you about this knife that I've had around me. Your grandfather. I forgot to mention. Yeah, he was a Navy SEAL. <laughs> We're, We're about to kill these guys. Can we wait and do this in a minute? What you, what you guys don't understand it shows you how dysfunctional the relationship was. Uh, yeah. well, <laughs> well, my point, my point with that was that it's like. Oh, and they named him the Black Manta. And I'm like, well, I know they were racist. Like, <laughs> like, like now that we have this story where he's a guy, but there's no doubt. I'm not blaming it on the the, 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 the societal norms of 1930 uh, 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 Navy SEALs. I, be like, I, I was so against this movie. Let me make this very clear, okay? <laughs> when I saw the Pristils and then I saw the trailer with and so it always turns oh, back. Permission to come aboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, no, oh god, no. And then, and then the movie won me. It just by the time they're, they're the octopus is playing drums and they do the they do the title card matches in the in the <laughs> arena and they list like you know. Oren's all of his strengths, and they have you know Aquaman strengths, pros, none, cons, drunk. Land dweller. <laughs> then, uh, I forgot the other one was. You know, like it was just. I'm like, oh, this is. I know where I am now. I realize. I get the joke. I get the joke now. I understand what the joke is, and I. Yeah. Well. So. So. I. And. And. I. I think. Um. With a bit of tightening, it could be a great movie. Instead. Now. Now. Here. Here. Here's the thing. Um. You can love a thing and it not be a good movie. I will be the first to admit that Flash Gordon is not a good movie. But boy, do I love it deeply. And there's not a single moment that I don't just want to chew up everything from the weird dialogue from... What the, movie? Uh, Flash Gordon from uh, okay. the... the, the, the Dino De Laurentiis jam, where yeah, apparently Dino De Laurentiis was the only one who didn't know he was making camp, and all of the actors knew it, and you could tell. Um, this feels like the same kind of thing, right? Like, but uh, uh, it is from a storytelling perspective a bit of a hot mess. Uh, uh, they, 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 mm -hmm. uh, there are giant boring sections, uh, and they they insist on doing right. things in order, but then also do it out of order for no. And uh, the well, music well, is all over the map. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> the music is insane all over the map. Well, there's no part of the, like, I'm the bad king, I have to go have a lot of meetings with people, needed to be told at all. Right. No part of that was, like, oh, a fuse. I, I, oh, wrong. Uh, what? Love that. 
<laughs> loved all of that. The more that that felt, well, A, because to me, the, the thing that I thought was unique, and specifically in, you know, while we have some franchises, may or may not be called Star Wars, that have had a really, really, really hard time, despite all the planning and the money in the world and all the hype, to fail to really take us anywhere new or exciting within a universe that we know has always been filled with new and shiny places and people. I really appreciated that, like, hey, look, all these kingdoms felt different. All of these... these uh, uh, Different uh, objectives. All, all, yeah, all, all the royalty felt different. Uh, uh, by the time that uh, we're at that final battle and uh, the, the fucking crab guy... Brian is, people! Is, Brian people! <laughs> yeah, the Brian people are like... He, the king is doing the, like, I'll never surrender, never but he doesn't have a pass, and he's just, like, <laughs> vibrating. Like, I was just... I was in because I felt that moment, and yet it was, it's like, I don't think you can get there unless you have, oh, well, here are the philosophers of the ocean, and here were the the, the, the powerful uh, 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 military might, and here are the, here's the savage land that they have to go through. And, and things it, happen in each place, unlike prequels. Like, like, first, you know, you meet Prince Dolph Lundgren, and then we get the fake attack, and I like the fact, like, Miro points out, like, like you knew that was fake, right? You just wanted an excuse. There was a little subtle smartness there that I thought was, because you're like, well, this this is over the top, and she's like, oh, like a convenient attack, and uh, you don't be that dumb, and, and you realize, oh, yeah, her dad knew it was, like, a BS attack, too, and that. I'm like, that was kind of cool that there was a little throwaway line, and they're like, yeah, that was really convenient and really cheesy, but they know it. He wants war. Then they go meet with the the fish people, the fisher people. <laughs> they just murder the guy. You know, he just, it was just, just, I mean, they held the princess fish. It was like Game of Thrones on acid. I, I exactly. Think, I think, I think that, that, that speaks to what I loved about it. What I absolutely loved was the outrageousness, the over the topness, uh, the embracing of like, yeah, of course we're going to go to the planet core. Why wouldn't we, right? I, I know, loved the all the design. Of the Jurassic <laughs> Park. What? That's fine. Hell? All about all of my beefs are are with uh, uh, you know pacing li little sure. things. I probably could have trimmed twenty minutes and tightened everything up. Probably could have hinted I earlier on. Cup, <laughs> probably could have hinted earlier on that we're in for a sillier ride. Like like um, uh, am I remembering right? It begins with the whole fifteen goddamn minutes of watching a love story uh, 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 with people wearing too much cake makeup uh, before hey, we get to the yeah, the opening much, scene. Yeah. Clearly had to be Aquaman. Man kicking ass and saving the day in that in that uh, in in that well, scene. And, so, and also, mm. it has Aquaman in character quoting H.G. Wells. <laughs> yes, which is like by the end of it, like I don't know if Aquaman, the guy, would be, like I don't think he would know if he think H.G. Wells is 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 a brand of power tool or something. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, that was look. Uh, it's it's a story that is inherently s silly in its telling, but I think very ambitious in its world building. And that to me is something that I want to reward in. Uh, and look, that's something where a, a place where I, I do think it does compare with Spider-Verse, where the, that is something where it's like, OK, here are the rules. Extraordinary things happen in this world, but they will happen because of these following reasons so you can invest yourself in the craziness happening without fearing that the rug's going to get ripped out from under you and uh, uh it's going to be stupid like we don't see like for all the the, the, the pedantic nature of uh, the the ocean master having to visit all the different fish kingdoms and Which brian and Bryce, I don't think you're heavily invested in the seriousness of the Ocean Master, the dismissiveness <laughs> which you regard that title. You know what I love? The uh, Ocean Master. Ocean. When they said Ocean Master, yeah. I, I thought, <laughs> why? You're already the king. Can we talk about him driving on the other side uh, in the Northeast and looking over and casually seeing 9-11 happen and just sort of like, oh, what's, uh, what's that? Is that a... Is that a 9-11 coming? Yeah, right, <laughs> well, know, <laughs> this world, remember, it's still in the DCU, which they've been desensitized to a lot of stuff. By now. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah, no, they're going to need 10 9-11s to even get a cup of coffee. Like, like this is, uh, we've already did, like, destroyed New York three times. Uh, uh, but yeah, look, th this is something that I said when we did uh, the 
uh, the episode on Christmas to the Ocean Master Point. Uh, David Goyer, one of the co-writers on uh, uh, the Dark Knight, the Nolan movies, he's done Blade, uh, but he was he did some talk because he was involved early on with the Man of Steel uh, Snyderverse, and they were like, well, if you're going to do Justice League, how do you do Martian Manhunter? And his thing was, well, first you got to find out something to call him that's not something as dumb as a Martian Manhunter. And I love that DC, in this world of unironic... Uh, uh, their their unironic branding. Look, this is the movie where Jason Momoa is going to come out from behind a burst steam pipe in the most beefcake, uh, uh, you know, kind of shot that you can have. And he's not going to wink and he's not going to make a joke. He's not going to have a a, a Tony Stark kind of moment. If anything, it would be self-depreciating, but that they, they want, they're like, no, you're looking at his abs and, and his pecs. And he's a handsome man. Am I? That's the point of this shot. It's it's like the same movie where our two love interests are going to unironically hold hands. And we want you to know that they are having a moment together. There's not going to be any jokes about pelvic sorcery or, you know, something to, to, to deflate the tension. We're going to unironically let this thing. That's the same movie where the Ocean Master is a title that needs to be respected and kept <laughs> out of the hands of, of rash warmongers like... I don't know, super shredder. Uh, <laughs> I and I, I, I respect uh, Goyer a lot, but like, there's a difference when a screenplay has his name and one of the Nolan brothers' names on it, mm-hmm. and not, you know, <laughs> you know that a Nolan on it, you get Batman Begins, you get Dark Knight. Without, you get. Man of Steel, Batman versus Superman, and this and and I and there that drive. And again, he gets credit for like his work with Guillermo del Toro, you know, and Blade. Uh, Steve Norrington actually did that was Blade, right? Um, and uh, uh, I think he might have done Blade too, which was yeah, which Blade, was, yeah, he, yeah. It was Norrington who did uh, Blade. So you know, Goyer gets credit. I give him a lot of credit for helping launch modern age of superheroes because Blade started the trend and then you got x-men which was just a solid let's make them realistic real real as real humans as we can and that's been great and really more so in the marvel universe etc but then in you know the dc credit there but yeah but you either marvel marvel had their test when they said hey iron man did really well people like this captain america's cool they're both sort of these believable kind of characters uh hulk which was universal and kind of still hard to get there great now let's do Thor. We're going to go to... At, and at that point, you're like, can can you really bring in magic? Because Batman didn't have magic, and Man of Steel just sort of didn't, didn't do much. And so, like, is it wise to bring in magic? Is it wise to do that in the big superhero universe? And Marvel said, yeah. We'll find <laughs> out. Of course. If we want to go where we want to go, and we want to get to the point where we have, you know, a villain called Thanos, you know, and then you know worked great, and so for although, DC. Although along that lines, though, did, what did we get? I mean, okay, in the way we're grinning as we're thinking of Aquaman, would the movie have been as good if if Mantis's head was uh, uh, two thirds the size of its comically <laughs> no, bigger, ridiculous bigger. Mighty Morphin Power Ranger <laughs> helmet? <laughs> like, like was that an important addition to to the to the scene? I, I, r- r- running running through running through Sicily like the mascot for Black Manta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I. I, I think Brian, you know, when you have one of the characters is riding a mosasaur, and you don't even—it's not even commented on—a prehistoric dinosaur that ate sharks, and it's just it, nobody cares. It's just a thing. Sure, <laughs> yeah, a sure. Giant, a humongous giant crab monster throwing volcano, throwing lava, and you worried about the size of the black manta's head. Okay, but all of those things were cool. <laughs> The size of Black Manta's head was it, it, not cool. It was very it silly. It didn't work out so well for Black Manta, did it? I, I, I love, said, I love the idea that he's going to show up like, ah, oh, I'll get you now, Aquaman. And then... <laughs> Speaking of Black Manta, I really enjoyed the dedication to making a live-action version of Homer Simpson falling down the cliff. Hitting his head over and over, over and over again. Over again. <laughs> it's, 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 
It was the sort of thing where oh. it went on so long because you you no one ever, ever dies in these movies, but it was like, okay, this is how I'll they're going to get the rid of him for now. It's a, good, it's a good thing he had such a big helmet. <laughs> but but it goes on for so long that you're like, oh, this is. Are you trying to tell me this is how you're going to kill this guy? Did you really kill this guy in such a oh. disgraceful way? Well, and we got before that you got when Aquaman got blown off by the blaster off of there. We got his own oh, fall. <laughs> Which is, oh. I, I'm sorry. The more I talk about it, the more I love this. Well, movie. and again, and again, you can you can love a thing deeply, but also admit it's 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 uh, uh not not a f it's it's great at what it told. I just wish it told it 20 minutes faster, and 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 and, and that's it. Well, that's right that's my thing. Beat. Stop. They're laughing at it wrong. No, 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 no. Praise. There, it's it's their parts are not only ham fisted that are sausage finger fisted, and <laughs> and yes, I think that Juan could have done some things technically better. What I absolutely agree. I will say that, and like you know, like, and this is what I'll say. Like my problem, like Wonder Woman. I enjoyed Wonder Woman. I really liked Wonder Woman. Patty Jenkins' direction on Wonder Woman was fantastic. The script writing on that, that last third of Wonder Woman drove me crazy because you took this really well-directed film, these great actors, and you gave it the friggin' storyboards from the last act of Captain America, you know? And we watched that, and I'm like, you, you could have done anything, and I'd love this, but this is so unoriginal for what it is, it frustrates me, but I still liked it. Yeah, uh, and that, look, uh, uh, the difference between those two movies to me is that I really, really, really liked the first act of Wonder Woman, uh, I was pleasantly surprised with where they took the character in a World War One setting that I, I didn't have a lot of patience for the fish out of water stuff, but I liked her on the battlefield. I thought that those uh, uh, scenes were really well directed. And then it just became almost the worst example of the, the Snyder versus habit of just putting impossible hero with impossible villain with gigantic swirling color in the background in an area that is remote so they can throw things at each other and we don't have to worry about uh, uh, casualties and then eventually there being a winner uh, whereas like here's one thing that I will say unironically that was some of the coolest like CGI alien like or you know uh, non-human battle stuff that I have seen since Lord of the Rings like in 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 cinema the 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 mm -hmm. creature design oh pretty much anything that's underwater was awesome. And, from, and from there, the there are moments in Aquaman that I'm like, if this was in a, there are scenes there, like if this was in a better film, and I mean, better mean like, you know, a, a tighter, better script, more serious, whatever, we would be OMG. Like the, the thing with the trench, you know, the trench scenes, yeah. the creatures on the boat. There are some, with the meeting introduction of Atlantis, I'm like, if this had been in the prequels, if this had been Phantom Menace, if this had been, you know, what we got there. And again, that was 20 years ago, and technically, but just the idea of this inspiring would have been better. But there wasn't a glimmer of that, of anything like that. And like, my frustration with like Solo and sort of the modern Star Wars stuff, there was more wonder in Aquaman than uh -huh. any of the new Star Wars films, which, mm. you know, most of them are technically way better, you know, from a storytelling point of from, view. From, and that's from most, a tightness that was sort of, of direction and Wanda scripting and storytelling and, and all that stuff. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I will say, but, I, uh, I thought a lot of the action choreography and, and cinematography was, was impressive, and I think it was designed to feel impressive, right? You had a lot of those long, roving, 360-degree shots where you're just kind of following it, the action as you, as you very smoothly go across. The, like, even, even the scene when they're in, uh, uh, in Sicily and there are all these big rooftop uh, moments like I it, like it felt all very impressive, but I think um, that was uh, a, sort of put a point on how sort of flat the film looks because there's so much CG stuff, and and so you get the very soft like easy to key out uh, lighting um, uh, uh, setups. Oh, by the way, did you did you guys see it 3D or two 2D 2D. 2D. Uh, I saw it in 3D. It was actually kind of a cool movie to see 3D because so much take place takes place underwater, mm -hmm. and 
there's just a lot more depth that you can put kind of in front because there's always shit like coming in front of them. But it was it was actually kind of an interesting 3D movie in a way that a lot of 3D movies aren't that in that like land scenes felt visually much more different uh, uh, underwater in 3D just in terms of like the movement of the characters and also just feeling like a more immersive uh, uh, experience. I, I have like I saw Into the Spider Verse in 2D, then I went back and saw it in 3D. I'm like, ah, it's kind of cool, but I'm like, man, it's not worth putting the gog glasses on my head. You know, I'm just and seeing a darker version. Uh, I think I I I didn't. If you said to me like, hey Andrew, we need you to do an Aquaman movie, I'd be like, um, okay, I wouldn't know what to do. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'd be like, it's Aquaman, and and I would have tried to make some realistic sort of thing or some sort of Batman underwater kind of thing, and it would have not been good. <laughs> would not have been as good as this. This was, and there, I I can't say that about a lot of things. Where I always like, I always have, I have high opinions on my ability to do other stuff, whether or not it's real or not. This was what Juan did with this was just for me was like it was bold you know it was it was it felt like it was more in the spongebob universe but i was fine with that yeah and i yeah. just i don't know i uh I, I mentioned this when we were talking about it in picks but i i really appreciated the the like the amount of plot that was in this movie um it, it didn't feel like some of the marvel films feel like which are just like Here's a here's a thing that happened, and then a lot of reasons to get different superheroes to fight each other. Um, yeah, I actually felt like there was a, like a a pretty substantial journey going on that constantly was able to justify why things were happening, um, and and make all of those set pieces have weight rather than just like oh now we're all at an airport fighting at this big you know empty space. Um, which Show is, is not I know what you're talking about. That was great. <laughs> which is not indicative of every every Marvel movie, and 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 you know that that. Well, you know, I I will say that like the the strength for me like in a Marvel movie is like there's a scene here where you know when they're fighting in Italy and and they're running the 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 Atlanteans are running through the walls, smashing through the walls, trying to do the chase. Yeah. I love what I loved about like the Russo brothers in particular, like in Winter Soldier when we saw that first done. That was nine seconds of the super powerful character, you know, just running, smashing out walls to get through. And then we move on to something else really cool. Here we get, you know, a minute of this, of this premise, which it's like, I saw it done elsewhere, which, but there were so many other things crammed into it. It's fine. I'm not going to fault it. Be like, I saw it somewhere else and it was better. But, um, and that was sort of the beauty of, I think of Marvel's is so much tighter, so much better. You know, Marvel movies are just they're just at this point now where it's like you you tell me you're going to do, you know, the the poop emoji Marvel movie. I'm like, um, let's uh, see how they do it this time. Yeah. <laughs> like, OK, I, I I can't see how that'll work, but I've been so wrong before. <laughs> I get that. And that's that's really kind of when I when I compare it to Marvel uh, to the Marvel brand, I'm just so thrilled that I can do that now and that it doesn't feel like DC is either doubling down on this very weird and dour kind of Snyder aesthetic. Uh, and it, it's not just aping Marvel. Like and I, I can see both those movies and I can feel different. And this was the first time absolutely unironically. I was just like, cool. DC movies are like very earnest and very action adventure. And they're going to put their time and effort into building their worlds. And I want to know more about, the Amazons. I want to know more about the next solo Aquaman movie. If it's a it's some sort of weird detective story with the Fisherman Kingdom, then I'm I'm in. Like I, I like this idea in a way that Marvel is kind of always telling a version of the same story with different trappings, and the characters are fun and breezy, and that and it it is polished like like a fine stone, a skipping stone. Whereas you know, DC can be a little bit more chaotic as long as it's earnest and it's really just trying to to have a good time i and i'm gonna my i'd say one of my criticisms of of the earlier dc stuff is that with the dark and dour was like and now we hear that but like so was nolan and it was brilliant you know it was brilliant it was you know those movies the early dc was like everything felt like a green screen set 
and they figure, ah, later on we'll figure out what it is. But smash, 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 go here, then we're going to punch the bad guy, keep punching him until he win. There was not a motive. I mean, Aquaman had, we're going here for this reason, and this is this. I felt like these were mostly, some places, yeah, felt like, yeah, just floating, standing in front of green screens. But other places felt like very real, visualized places that the characters were interacting with. Yeah. You know, there was a point in Justice League where, like, like in, in the Batcave where I'm like, they're standing on a green screen set. Like this, they're like literally standing, sitting on boxes in a not real place. It doesn't even feel real. The lighting doesn't feel real. And it's sort of my problem with like a lot of the other earlier DC stuff where it was just like, I'm watching a video game cutscene. I didn't get that here. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, I th- I think part of that was uh, I, I I dug it was it was a a, a surprisingly subtle uh, moment when you know she names him Ar- Arthur and uh, you know specifically after the Arthurian legend and his job is to you know be the one to unite the kingdoms and all that stuff. Um, uh, uh, you're right. I, I I again I don't fault any of its aim. I don't fault any of the places we went. I don't fault any of the characters we met. I don't even for the. I mean I mean friggin' Jason Momoa is fantastic across the board. Uh, it was very distracting to me that the music was all over the map. <laughs> like at some point, the part that got me was when all of a sudden you're like, and now let's go Tron music. <laughs> Loved it. Loved it. Uh. Yeah, and then uh, 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 you know, whatever. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe make it twenty minutes or uh, shorter, and 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 cut out uh, the 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 sort of um, what is it? Uh, Teller once told me that the cardinal sin of all magicians is they say what they're going to do and then do it. Not every story needs to begin at the beginning. I I think that's the part that that I I wasn't crazy about. Is uh, I don't know. Maybe start. But how off would with you know that he had parents? I, right. <laughs> It really well, felt that way, right? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say here that oh. I would, I would say that Spider-Man: Home can't come and handle that wonderfully because everybody knows the Spider-Man story, you right. know. And Aquaman had the problem of, with the exception of Wonder Woman, I would say the other movies are kind of awful, really awful, right? And Juan wants to, I want to tell a story. I want to tell a standalone story. I need to give you really the backstory of Atlantis. Because it's not just he had parents, but it's like... Then start with Atlantis. Like, that moment, like, halfway into the movie, where they start at this amazing sure. uh, 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 clockwork technology mid-1800s society. Brian, or... well, I would it, argue... Yeah. I would argue that the point there was they wanted to have his introduction to Atlantis and our introduction to Atlantis happen at the same time. They wanted us to see it with his eyes, where he finally sees what it is. And so... Although, and you have to kind of ignore things that happen in Justice League, <laughs> but the point there is, is they want to have this, finally we see this and we're like, holy crap, no, this is what Atlantis is, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I would say that the opening was like, yeah, I could, it could be better, sure, but I think that it did serve a purpose, you know, and it was, it was, I, I, him. Yeah. I agree it was long and there was a moment about halfway through when I'm like, uh, oh man, we are we are gonna visit every single one of these seas, huh? Seven <laughs> seas. Huh? Oh Jesus! All right. Uh, but then it, it just so backloaded with the creature stuff that and 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 the 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 crazy world building stuff that I really that to me look the tone's the tone. I very much enjoyed it. I can dig if people. Uh, uh, I can appreciate the, its definition is off kilter or inconsistent. Uh, the acting. Well, it was not the strongest for me. I, I didn't necessarily no, think no. that anybody I mean, it's Momoa <laughs> and Amber Heard, you know, who yeah. are who are still starting out. In They're fine. The They're fine. Yeah. It, it, it served it served the movie well, but to me, continued to grow and continue to impress me was the world building. And when it ends with the the ancient <laughs> the ancient smog dinosaur who has a stare down with Aquaman that effectively breaks down to bro, chill. Bro, chill, bro. All right, you can take the the, 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 the crazy trident, uh, and then he bursts out of the floor of the ocean <laughs> from the <laughs> center of the earth. <laughs> interrupt, interrupt, crab, Braveheart. Uh, <laughs> and brine. He's center. a brine, Justin. He's brine, a shrimp. Sorry, Brineheart. Uh, is interrupted <laughs> as 
has there's seahorse mounts and shark mounts, and he's on a dinosaur, and the dude's dressed like the Shredder, and uh, then they're like, uh, there's Ocean Masters on the line. It, it was just like. It's like, oh, what are you going to do? Fight them on land. <laughs> All right, let's go. I don't know. I was just, but at that point, it, it, it kind of hit what I loved about the movie so hard that I had I had forgiven the fact that about halfway through, I was definitely like, ooh, man, it seems like you guys have set out a lot of adventure uh, uh, before we're done, and we are definitely an hour and a half into this movie. <laughs> there, There's that moment of like, I don't think I've encountered the hero hitting his deepest moment of self-doubt uh we got we got some time here don't we <laughs> uh but yeah i mean i i agree with andrew the the lost uh the lost ocean stuff like the creature design on that was amazing i thought that except, was, that was ex except for the costume cobbled together but i don't know how much money she got paid uh nicole kidman to, to, to dress oh, like a murloc <laughs> like that was oh, at that point yeah at that point once you get to there like yeah straight I'm, up I'm in, like coming to and the attack and then leading there and it's like you know um <clears throat> I have, uh, my girlfriend will tell you, I have a very good uncanny sense of knowing when to go to the bathroom. And so <laughs> I, I did, what's that, Rusty? She says, yes. <laughs> so I did that three times when I saw, the first time I saw Aquaman. Uh, Dead Polymers called it with the Karate Kid crane kick at the end. It's like, a, oh, me, uh, I used to be the Green Goblin, but now I spin this trident. If you do <laughs> you know, this move correct. Funny, it's like. Can it's, be no defense. <laughs> I went up and used the restroom early on, and then there was this, he mentions, well, Volko taught me. I'm like, oh, I missed this. And then I saw it again. I'm like, no, I didn't miss this. They never, we have no idea who the hell Volko was until, you know, we, you know, de-aged William Defoe shows up. Right. You know, <laughs> and I'm like, I think there's a, I think there's, you, you, you talk about taking 20 minutes out, Brian. I think there was probably 45 that were already taken out. Yeah. Uh, and I'm so excited to purchase the extended edition. I have no like like literally like to me the best way to classify this movie is a dumber Lord of the Rings. Like, uh, uh, but or a, but a I would say Fish the, of the Rings, the best yeah. version of uh, the Phantom Menace ever. Like, uh, if you if you're gonna force me to watch a badass as a kid, <laughs> then so you did great. that was a what fine way. Did? When he when he's in the the Atlantan village and I'm like oh Jesus here's Gunga like what's next the Planet Core and then they go to the, <laughs> the Planet, Planet Core <laughs> <laughs> yes also uh, I don't know if we mentioned it so far but I I did love the fact that everybody stands around and you almost forget outside of their hair waving that that they're underwater until it's the end of the scene and when all of a sudden everybody you know flops away <laughs> <laughs> well, remember there's so much there's so much like uh uh, uh oh we gotta hide <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, uh and then the uh the one battle around the fire ring they're halfway to, ah we're plummeting to our death and then two feet before the the lava they're like oh that's right we could swim <laughs> <laughs> brian it's a lot of inertia I, it's, sure it's, yeah. sure sure and there are events and stuff there's it was interesting too is like i think it was in justice league where that was where snyder for that like they talked underwater with like air bubbles over their heads yeah and uh -huh. juan was like i'm not doing that no. <laughs> you know like i'm not I, like there's a number of things that were established there that he's like no no i'm gonna just do this this my own thing you know that, and, that, and that to me ultimately the big decision from a screenwriting perspective of like how do you make aquaman interesting make it very limited when he's on land like make him yeah. more pop like he is he is uh, unique because he can fight on land and he can bridge the the worlds but all the interesting stuff is happening under the sea under the sea is uh outer space uh it's it's just as exciting as star wars under the waves Boom. Now let's go like that. That I think is was the, the, the decision that makes that movie fun and watchable. Agreed. Yeah. Cool. So there you have it. Recommendation. Best movie of 2018. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, you know, I watched the Shazam trailer and, you know, I'm hopeful. There's potential. There's potential there. Yeah. You know, it could be a joke that sort of wears itself thin and it's done. But I'm worried about Shazam because I see the trailer like, oh, cool. But I'm like, man, it, was it like just all shot around like the school location? 
<laughs> you know, like it was just I, like I, I haven't seen the trailer yet for Shazam. For Shazam, yeah, no, oh, that's interesting. I'll have to watch it, but uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, Zachary Levi was in the second season of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and I didn't realize he was as tall and muscular as he is. Like when he first got cast, I was thinking of him as Chuck, which was always kind of scrawny. You know, he was sort of like every man, but I guess I'd, I'd misjudged. Hmm. Yep. Any picks? Uh, Aquaman. 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 And... All right. Um, it's been after. Uh, oh, also, uh, Ocean to Ocean by Pitbull. <laughs> <laughs> I've never uh, seen stunt casting the... of music in such a way. I was just so thrilled. <laughs> You're just flying over, uh, over <laughs> the Sahara. All righty. Well, I think that's going to do it for us today. Yeah. Uh, we'll have Night Attack on the stream here in a couple hours. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, uh, it was a good Night Attack. <clears throat> and uh, if you haven't listened to it, if you want to get your Night Attack uh, fix early, go listen to this week's Ice Cream Social. Because we pretty much did Night Attack there, too. Yeah, by the way, if we would have thought for two seconds, uh, uh, we would have asked, oh, well, which one of these are going to come out first and which one's going to come out second? Uh, uh, so we probably would have recorded Ice Cream Social first and then done Night Attack. So the jokes that we are referencing in the Ice Cream Social episode that came out yesterday would pay off on Night Attack. I, but we, so. I, 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 thought, I thought we did a good job of sequestering the two silos. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I, know. I, I don't think it was a major issue, but, uh, 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 but, but just... Just so you know, that, that was recorded first, and so there are jokes that pay off in the Ice Cream Social episode. So listen to Night Attack and then listen to Ice Cream. There you go. All right, guys. That's going to do it for us. We'll see you later. Love you. Peace. Love you. Peace.